Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Gray. I'm Wolfman. What's up, everyone? It's... <sighs> 20 right. minutes ago, Wolfman had a joke that this was take 5,868, mm -hmm. but now this would be 5,869. Uh, yeah, well... It's 557, I think I said. Yeah, but close yeah, enough. Yeah, it, it was... Listen... We're not perfect. <laughs> no. Oh, Did you ever see the Alex Jones clip you were when fucking he's on perfect. Uh, Joe Rogan? Jesus, we've been doing a lot better. Have you ever seen that Alex Jones clip when he's on uh, Joe Rogan? He's like, look, I may be kind of retarded. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that sometimes. Um, just a quick recap because I'm not going over everything again. Yes, we are a week behind. It is the first time uh, since starting doing this that we had missed the week. I traveled down to Delaware last week to pick up my mom. On my way down, I stopped by Wolfman's. We watched Club Dread. Merry old time. Um, picked up my mom, drove all the way back. <clears throat> it was wiped out, tired, so we were going to push it to the next day. Okay, go to push it to the next day for recording. And my computer just completely... Fr After talking for three and a half hours on Discord without any problem, as soon as we started recording... My computer decided to freeze on me. And, and then at after that an point, hour and a half of talking today, it froze on him again. And it seems to be every time we try to record the show, something massively happens. And then I had an incident and we all like, uh, it's just been an issue. As of right now, because uh, we use Discord. Uh, if you guys are fans of the show, you know, either you're on the <clears throat> Discord or, you know, we talk about it quite often. Um... I was using the app, and I said, you know, I haven't had an issue until I fucking updated it. So I'm using the website right now, and I actually deleted the app completely. I just don't even want it on my computer right now. Yeah. So, so, so now, now I'm struggling to hear what he says, but unfortunately, you're going to get a recorded copy of his, you know, the way we splice things together. So if I kind of make funny faces, I'm just trying to figure out what the hell he's saying because he keeps cutting it now. But our audio we'll, we'll deal. is being yeah. recorded independently, so that should always be fine. Yeah. And my video quality should be okay, um, you know, give or take, whatever. Um, but it's just the communicating between us right now um, until we figure this out. And I got a it, very, needy, very needy doggo at my side under my feet, so... Yeah, but I finally met him, and he is very puppy-like. It doesn't matter how big he is or how old he is. I think just, like, his personality in general is, like, very puppy-like. Um, cool dog. Hi. You know, he busted my chops the entire time I was there, but when I actually went to lay down for bed, like, on the couch, like, he didn't mess with me at all, you know? He probably he, he knew it was time night, to sleep. Time. Yeah, yeah. Yup. So, the movie that we're covering, because this is episode 16, uh, even though technically we should be on 17. Lay down. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm glad we're not skipping You're over it. I mean, me. we, we have a list of movies that we want to cover, so obviously, <clears throat> you know, we're going to do it. Um, before I say the title of the movie... Stop. You're a little bit, you're a little bit more well versed in this subject than I am. Stop. Um, I I'm like an average fan. I would say you're more of a hardcore fan. Um, of but when of what? Well, when somebody says the term action movie, who is the first actor that pops in your head? Usually Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Okay. What type of movies are the first rumblings like? What, what do you mean? The first type? What, like, like, where, where are you if going someone's with this? Like, because the no, no. I'm just saying. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, because to someone like me, you can't just simple it, narrow it down to action movies. You have like I know because there's there's subgenres of action movies and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a subgenre, but not really because there's just like 
you can almost break the action movies up by decades. Like there's there's right. a huge difference, but there's not really a subgenre. It's just the time it was made. Well, no, so that, that's, like, that's what I we think said we earlier. Talk there's action, like though. yeah, there's fighting ones that are considered <clears throat> action. There's gun ones that are considered action. There's yeah, I, mean, I guess there's I guess there's like gang. a yeah, but they're, they're terrorists and gang isn't really like a subgenre. You have more of a gunplay style action movies, and you have like more combat. I don't. I don't want to say martial art because it's not necessarily a martial arts movie, but they're a lot of kicking and punching, fighting, and fighting but they're not necessarily a martial arts movie. They're kind of like a hybrid, right. you know. Right. So, yeah. what would be like the top two or three that pop in your head right off the bat when someone says action movie? Well, action movie, like there's usually just Arnold movies. <laughs> so, like, uh, like, like Predator, Commando, or, Predator, Commando. Yeah, I mean, for some reason that's what pops in my head, and then. I don't know. It's just kind of hard. So many movies pop in my brain with that. But yeah, it's just the only reason the only reason I'm asking, because I know, yeah, you are a huge action fan. And by a lot of the standards of the people who are just kind of, you know, like into certain action movies or, oh, I've seen that and this and that um, the tropes pop up the um, basically your stereotypes. Oh, well, it's got to have explosions. You have to. Uh, there's got to be one-liners. <clears throat> Someone's got to be running away from an explosion without looking back. There's got to be at least one car chase scene. Yeah. And I, yeah. Th- I think the person that epitomizes this the best is Chuck Norris. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Because think of, like, but, but here's the thing. Done- but here's the thing, though. Did Chuck Norris start all these? Or no. or were they around before him though? Or did I don't he just make them famous? St- or did he make them famous? That's it. I don't want to no, say he no, no. I'm just it, I'm, I'm just I'm building. I'm I wasn't. I'm I know. building up like, you know what I mean? I'm, it's a uh, obviously you know gunfights and car chase scenes and stuff like they've all been around before Chuck Norris. Oh, absolutely. You know, but he there's just something masterful about the shitty awesomeness of. Some of his older movies, the way they put everything together, though. I want to say Chuck Norris took the action movie to the Team America, fuck yeah, and Spike TV level mm-hmm. of machismo. Yeah, you know I mean, what with, I mean. With ex- like, yeah, there's certain other. But here's the thing: I think Arnie, to a certain extent, and Stallone and 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 Van Damme like overshadowed Chuck to a certain extent, but not at they the did. time. Like, in the 80s, I, Chuck was the shit, but for some reason, people make Chuck Norris jokes, but they forget about him, and they leave him out. But in the 80s, Chuck was the man, even though Stallone and Arnie were coming up, and upcomers, in the, and they were doing movies in the early 80s, too. Mm-hmm. But a lot mm-hmm. of those movies got more fame later on, when they made some of their other yes. bigger movies. So they weren't as yeah. famous back then, even though we consider them huge, massive hits now. But they weren't yeah. necessarily at the at the time to a certain extent, you know, with a, a couple, I th- a couple. Uh, but I, I think at least we've seen the dynamic range <clears throat> of uh, Sylvester Stallone, and we've seen it from Arnold, and you know, to an extent, Seagal and uh, Van Damme. Where I feel like anytime Chuck tried to do a movie outside of the realm that he was comfortable with, either. He didn't do the movie, or he turned that movie into something he was comfortable with. So it's uh, like no, uh, you got it's, Jingle no. All the Way. You know, well, hold on, you got yeah, like Jingle yeah. All the Way. Uh, Schwarzenegger did some kids <laughs> movies, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, don't shoot my mom, or my mom will shoot. Stop her, my Stop mom. Her you mom know, bullshit. You. Well, I yeah. mean, Sloan did a lot of other. Sloan had, you know, he did, I mean, he started with Rocky, then he did Rhinestone. Well, he uh, of, uh, started with other. Italian Stallion. <laughs> yeah, no, but then he did Rhinestone. It was like that fucking cowboy movie yeah. he did with, I think Dolly Parton might have been in it. You know, like, he I believe, yeah, yeah, tried yeah. to have a range of other stuff besides his other movies. Arnie just kind of kept with all his movies. He just did, like, the one-off comedy with Jingle All the Way a little bit, and then he tried, uh, then he did Batman well, he and did, Robin. Uh, it was supposed to be funny. Wait, it was Mr. And he Freeze. did the one with the kids, like, Kindergarten Cop or yeah, whatever. Yeah, Kindergarten Cop, Junior. He did and branch twins. off a little bit, yeah. 
Yeah. Which twins. Yeah, I guess. But that was like a different, I, no, a different. Yeah, they all came out around the same time. But I would say even like in present day, Schwarzenegger was more like The Rock because The Rock could do the comedies. He could do yeah, serious. Yeah, he could do he action. Was, he, yeah, The Rock now is the Schwarzenegger of his, of his yeah. time. Whereas Chuck Norris, I would feel, is more like a... <sighs> well, he's, he's Chuck Norris. Van Damme is the Chuck Norris of his time. Cause, yeah. Because Van Damme didn't really branch out into his other stuff, really. He just did his own stuff. I'm Chuck, trying to think of someone recent that would I could put in there, though. But there's no real action stars anymore. No, like, I guess the closest thing you can consider, and I, I say this with the highest compliment, is Scott Atkins. Which I know you okay. don't really know who that is, but... No. He's... But has his, have his movies been, like... Uh, his movies are more... <sighs> hidden... But he is the Chuck Norris of his time. He is okay. the premier action star right now. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of um, God damn, I can't think of his fucking name right now. Michael Jai White was almost that guy at one point in time. Yeah, but he kind of whatever. I, his movies but, were definitely. But in that. he, this guy, starred with Michael Jai White in Undisputed too. Which okay. To, like you had the Wesley Snipes and Ving Rhames did the original one. It was a prison fight movie, which is kind of sort of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. based with people tried to compare it with Mike Tyson being in prison and stuff, and they tried to make this fight movie. It's around the same time, but then you had Scott Atkins, who was in The Expendables too. He was he was Van Damme's henchman, so they did give him okay. the treatment. He was put in there. They did acknowledge you don't get in those movies unless you've. Unless he's yeah, done something, you, you, you know, you know what I yeah. mean. Like, no, absolutely. And I was even thinking like a bigger name because Chuck was big in the eighties. Where yeah, Scott Atkins but, may not. But those you know, movies aren't big like they used to be anymore. He's like the big. No, they're name. not. He's the big name if you watch these type of movies. Like he's the guy now. Yeah, but even his commercial value in the eighties was up there. Yeah. I would even say like like a Jason Statham. Because Statham, yes, he's done a few odd and end movies where, you know, dipped in comedy a little bit. But if you see a Statham movie, odds are it's going to be an action movie. He's not really doing, like, a yeah, whole bunch but, of buddy yeah, cop movies. It's, and... it's different, though. He, I consider him on a different... <sighs> Statham, yes, he's been the main guy to a certain extent. But his biggest movies that he's done have always been him co-starring, though. He's never been the star. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Like with that, the movies that he starred in, they're very Chuck Norrisy. They're like, not the though. Meg. They're not though. That's not Chuck Norris. Action at all. wise, no, no. I'm saying action wise, uh, box office wise. But no, yeah, the popular, the real popular movies he's been in, he's been you know second fiddle. Um, he's no although Snatch that, yeah. is an excellent movie. Yeah, but that's not not an action movie though. No, it's not. But I'm saying he's like the main character in that. He gets main billing. He, he's and, not uh, it's the awesome main. Movie. There's no really. The, Brad Pitt's like the main character in that. He's still, he's still a co-star. In that. I wonder who gets top billing on that because they someone has to get it. I don't know. But anyway, like, I don't. I don't. He's he's, Jason Statham has been like kind of. His movies are different. They're more of a martial arts style when they are. But he's always with someone. I mean, he's done a ton of movies with Jet Li. He's done the Expendable movies. He's done a couple solo movies by himself. And then now he's starring with The Rock in the Fast and the Furious movies. And mm -hmm. then they have their own standalone. So I don't really consider him. That's why I go back to Scott Atkins because he's the guy. I mean, he's done movies with Tony Jaa, who everyone thought was going to be like the next coming of martial arts fucking gods. But yeah. I mean, he's really good, but he just. With his lack of English, it hasn't really translated. But would you say Scott Atkins' movies right now are as big as Chuck Norris's in the 80s when they were coming out? If you like those movies, yes. But they're not... You, you so can't compare them. It's like apples and oranges, though, because the times but, um, were different but then. Did Chuck, but did Chuck not have like commercial value in the 80s that everyone knew his name because of those action movies? Uh, or was it like hidden action movies? No, you know well, what so I mean. He, like, he has some hidden action movies. He just has some yeah. hidden drama e 
movies and whatnot, but he didn't have those big movies that went in the theaters. I think if Scott Atkins made the movies he makes now and made them then, he would be the man. The okay, you know what I mean. Right. It's, that, that that's sense. what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like apples and oranges. I can't compare. Are his movies as big as Chuck's were back then? It, the climate's different. The people are different. You know, you well, can't it's, it's make... also tons Scott of movies Atkins are getting movies are released. very like machismo, like you know that's frowned upon right, now right. in society. You know, that's why. But like those movies aren't big. tons of movies get made every year that never make it to the theaters. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're not successful. I mean, no. Netflix <clears throat> has been putting out massive movies and miniseries, and not once have they been shown on the big screen. You know. Yeah, well, um, that's things are different now. You can do that right to Netflix. That's what and, I'm saying. And make a massive amount of money, you know, like right. making and that, a Netflix. And, but movie. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like in theaters, it seems like they're only pushing like the super big budget or the big movies. Yeah. Yeah, where the big budget movies. Action yeah. really. Yeah, like I guess Transformers and stuff like that. It would be like your most <coughs> action movie. Your John, your John Cena's, which is well, another action star coming I, up. I you know, yeah, sort of. I mean. You're, you're, he's, he's, he's trying, too. he's trying to be, he's, uh, whether he, he's going to end you up, don't think he's he, gonna... no, he's going to end up being like, uh, the Mark Wahlberg of DVD action movies. You know yeah, but he mean? was already doing that with WWE. I know. Their, and the, I don't, you know, the I don't Marine think and... yeah, but the Marine was a different guy in every movie though, except for. The Miz played three movies yeah, of the Marine. Yeah. But yeah. It was That's... Ted DiBiase Jr. Yeah. John Cena. Well, it was, C- it was Cena first, and then DiBiase yep. Jr. Yep. And then I think and they were going to... Ki- and then because DiBiase Jr. didn't stay in the WWE, which is probably yep. why he didn't he- get the rest of the movies, because I think he would have kept going, and then the Miz took over. I hate the fucking Miz. Can't stand that guy. Yeah, and they actually were like going to have Randy but, Orton yeah. do it. Um, But r- I know, there was a huge... Just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's we a bad guy though. He plays a bad guy. You can't have him play the Marine. No, he he would definitely be a much better bad guy in any movie he'd ever be in. Um, and I know they offered it to CM Punk at one point, but he turned it down because he said, you know, he didn't want it to just be some like tax write off, no promote. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. WWE yeah. movies have gotten better over the years, but back then. So, yeah, a lot of them are just tax right off. Like I didn't realize that there's like five or six marine movies now. I knew of two, maybe oh, the yeah. third one I think <laughs> I heard of. But yeah, there's like five or six of them now. I'm like, Sean Jesus Michaels Christ. is in one with uh, the Miz. They play like old mm-hmm. army buddies or whatever. And oh, I Christ. love Sean. I don't care what people say. He's no, I just like it's like oh Christ, like I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so this movie. In particular, is the most. Oh, see, I can't say it because I haven't seen all Chuck Norris's movies, but of what I've seen, it is the most overblown action y movie that's ever actioned <laughs> over an action. It's literally like off the scale. It's like action on top with, of action on top of that. I, I, I joked around. I said, this is, this is the Michael Bay of Chuck Norris movies before Michael Bay was Michael Bay. That, yeah, I. I would say he saw this as a kid yeah. and was, was like, like, I want to make movies I like do. that. I want to make movies. Yep. So, yeah, like later, well, we'll just go over it now since we're talking about it. In the trivia, though, uh, Canon Films, who we should actually make a whole video on them in general. Yeah, There's a good documentary. There's a good documentary of Canon Films, and um, they cut pretty much everything out of this movie story-wise uh, to make it. I understand it. I think it makes sense, but in order to make it like flow better and and the, and maybe understand their reasons more, like you get it. I don't. I don't need that much for an action movie, but they they wanted it to focus on Chuck Norris and more action scenes, even though it's 147. This must have been like a three hour epic movie. It had to, <laughs> dude. Like according to the editor, How much who they, said, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it had to have been at least an hour of footage removed. At least an well, hour. Of I mean, and maybe, what it maybe, 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 maybe it could have been a half hour. It says an but hour still, and 47 minutes right now, and then they cut all the dialogue and secondary characters out of the movie for the most part. There is dialogue in there now, but it only promotes Chuck mostly. That's what I'm saying. There, mu- there might have been more backstory. Two and a half hour movie. Yeah. 
like like they Jesus. don't tell you why the bad guys are invading the U.S. They just do because they're bad guys, which I know you had an issue with. We'll get into that later. But this is something yeah. we're talking about. Maybe there was an actual issue in the movie, like something specific, which we would have never known. Yeah, but yeah, they just bad guys just do bad not- guy things, and Chuck Norris got to take them out with, and he knows exactly where they are, no matter what, without any investigation. Not not. <laughs> too far off topic but this is the first time i've jumped on uh the list of canon films on wikipedia how did they not turn into like amblin or fucking mgm like how you got you gotta watch you gotta watch the the documentary documentary. on on netflix and you'll understand why they were super cheap they literally would make like 40 or 50 movies a month they might as well have been a porn studio with as many movies as they they were killing it out as it back but the problem is, is they had for every hit they had, they had to have like five or five to ten failures, so they never, they never made the money. Like they were making money, but they were literally scraping by because of how many money, how many movies they were making. You know what I mean? They're making yeah, them dirt cheap. Like in nineteen eighty five alone, it looks like they released twenty four movies. That's two movies per month for the entire year. Yeah. But they were they were making more more than that, like literally, and then whether or not these movies made it to the light of day, right? You know. But I mean, like, let's just like some of the names, obviously, like Breaking, yeah, huge breakdancing movie. Um, well, they have I know, some. I, I, they have some of the biggest movies of the eighties and nineties in here. They, and they have some do. Of the, then they have some of the biggest flops, also, though. Like, see, and like, you don't know much about the flops. No, 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 they were no. Flops. What I mean is, th- they were, they were, they're flops because they never made it big in the theaters like they wanted to, but they're now cult classics on the DVD rental VHS scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, some... I mean, dude, like the Death Wish series, Enter the Ninja. Um, I just saw one, Ninja Assassin, Master um, of the Universe. With Dolph Master Langer, of the Universe, it, like they obviously uh, today's almost, movie, almost yeah. every single Chuck Norris movie, almost not all of them, yeah. but like well, I'd say about seventy percent of Chuck Norris's movies were on canon, which is also why I think Chuck kind of faded away a little bit and went to TV while the other guys got bigger because yeah. he wasn't making movies for that blockbuster studio anymore. Canon yeah. made Cyborg. They made. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's Cyborg with. Dude. Van Damme, which was directed by the guy that did Nemesis when we, were, when we did oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, I don't think Nemesis is on canon, but I'm not sure. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2? Yep. They did? That yeah, blows there, my mind. There, there's just... There's more movies God, than you they... realize. And they had the Superman iconic 4. logo. They had the iconic logo that comes in. What's that? Superman what? 4 came out right... Like, literally two weeks before master of the universe and they did both of them and it's funny because superman 4 is considered one of the worst yeah superman and they, they talk about that in the in the documentary <laughs> okay all right yeah cool yeah yeah oh uh, yeah it's what? superman 4 is one of the movies that broke canon i could see it because i mean yeah. they were huge i don't I, I don't remember much of the originals. They're a little bit before my time, but everyone said like for the longest time until like Tim Burton's Batman, the Superman if, movies were like the only superhero movies. They that were. were like, there was other ones, but none of them made it. It was just Superman was the only like the first two Superman movies were actually kind of good. Yeah, and I've seen the thre- first and one. And then three, four, and I think there was even a fifth one where just like you're like, Ugh. okay, I get Harper and just thinking about them. <laughs> like fuck kickboxer all right so yeah i gotta watch this documentary tonight because the, the, these guys by just by yeah. looking at some of these names yeah and there, there's calico was another company that did a, a ton of movies like arnold swerks in area did some of them like his uh red heat was one of them on there and i think i remember their logo calico had the the c's that went yeah like uh Almost like that RoboCop yeah. kind of. No, no, that's canon. Where it was the C like this, and the other, and the like, the thing yeah. came in. Oh. That's canon. Calico right. okay. was the one where it traced, like a C, and then back up to C, and then down the C, and then back up to C, and then it just like went like this until it was like a half moon shape, or like half a moon. I'm um, yeah. It's, it's I hard, see like, it now. It's some similar. 
Yeah. So they did a lot of uh, Schwarzenegger's mm -hmm. um, early stuff. Yeah. There, there's another okay. company, and I can't think of who it is off the top of my head, but there, there's 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 a few of them that were like the action movie giants, and these were two of the biggest, and they both eventually failed because of the way they made movies. Yeah, so they had some it's basically... Movies, but... Let's make ten movies, and hopefully one does yeah. good to cover the cost well, like, of the it's rest. Like, it's like throwing things at a wall, you know, throwing ten, twelve things at a wall. One or two of them are going to stick. You know what I mean? It's not the same thing. Let's make but is, a bunch of movies. But is that what sticks? Are those two uh, two movies that make money going to cover the other ten that flopped, and that, hopefully make more? Because they had a couple that actually made a ton of money because they were huge movies, and they financed. Another fucking you know thirty movies that were terrible you know but Jesus unfortunately Christ. they yeah, they couldn't but because they were cutting so many corners and doing bullshit uh, I'm, we're getting too far in, like right, right we should right, be saving we'll do this a for full review of yeah canon we at should, one point we should do canon as its own movie and talk about the actual documentary and and stuff like that and do like you know top 10 canon movie list or something you know or then that yeah that'd be a underrated good, canon that'd be a movie, good youtube you know? video and do like yeah. the top 10 worst canon movies because mm -hmm. <laughs> they also did break into electric boogaloo yep. which oh god you know, so bad i know now, now it's just but this name for something else <laughs> 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 but but this movie invasion usa is by far like I said, the mo I'm not going to say it's the most canon movie because, you know, they're everywhere, yeah. but it is the most 80s action-y, stereotypical movie I've ever seen. And if you can say, if you can name one that's more over the top than this, I would like to see it. Uh, I'd have to think about it, but I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sure. sure you have some. Yeah, but there's, there's so many movies. I can't, I can't think off the top of my head. It's like I'm put on the spot. You know what I mean? But, I mean, did you ever see Delta Force, though? Delta Force, I think, to a certain sense, more over the top than this, too. I think, somewhat. I, I think I thought Delta Force was taken a little more seriously. It, it was, but, like, Delta Force was, like, super over the top, though. Maybe not Maybe not like this. Uh, Let's just say that the budget for rocket launchers on this movie was probably larger <laughs> than most budgets for movies at that time. Well, I have some fun stuff about that, too. <laughs> About blowing okay. stuff up in the in the trivia, we'll get to that. There's one really good trivia thing in there about blowing stuff up in rocket launchers. So, well, okay, yeah, so this, this has to have the most uses of rocket launchers in the movie. Let's just say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and most diverse use for rocket launchers in the movie because there's a lot of rocket launchers in this movie. There is a discrepancy towards the end that when we get there, I will bring up. Don't let me okay. forget that discrepancy of um, rocket launchers. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, the movie was directed by Joseph Zito. Mm -hmm. You're going to recognize um, the name when you start going through his list. Oh, trust me. I know one that sticks out fucking beyond everything else. That's for damn sure. Director and producer. No, not producer. Director of my favorite Friday the 13th movie. Friday the 13th, part four, the mm -hmm. final chapter. And then before that, he did The Prowler, which is considered one of the best 80s oh. slasher movies. I had that original movie poster framed, and a girl I was dating stole it. Like, we broke up, and when she moved out, she took... I'll give her credit. She took everything that was hers, mm -hmm. but she took one thing that was mine, and it was that Prowler. fucking poster. So, and then he also directed... <gasps> Miss, missing blood rage. What? He did blood rage. I've actually, I've probably seen it, but I don't recognize it off the top of my head. Yeah, nineteen eighty. Yeah, that was before Prowler. This, this is one of the worst horror. Oh, dude, wait until we're done recording. I'm going to show you some <laughs> shit. Uh, it's awful. I've probably seen this. It's yeah, awful. I've probably seen it. But yeah, he directed that. Yep. So he directed Missing in Action, which is pretty. It was right before Invasion USA. Yeah. Even though I think it came out. Actually, no, I'm going to keep up before that. He did the Alice Cooper, He's Back, the Man Behind the Mask video for part six. Oh. Let me see that. Okay. 
Yeah, he did yeah, Red, yeah. Red, Red Scorpion with Dolph Lundgren. It's one of Dolph, Dolph Lundgren's best, best flicks ever. Fucking love that movie. And then the other two, obviously, they're way later. <laughs> Red Scorpion's one of the last things he did, but unfortunately. Of note. To note. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he did some, um, you know, he did some producer stuff, but some TV. That's probably why, if you look, he's a producer for 97 episodes of Critical Moments from 2007 2013 so that was a good chunk of yeah a good chunk of his time dedicated yeah. to but that you know yeah obviously he rewrote um, red scorpion i didn't know there was issues with that mm -hmm. okay interesting it, it's like he he he's not known for quantity but well, well, we didn't definitely... we, we're going into the the director and we never told him what the movie was i don't think no i did I, I said it before oh, when right. I was like the most actiony of action movies no, I, I ever. Thought, I thought you were like holding it in and you didn't say it yet. I don't remember you saying. Oh that no, anymore. dude! I blew okay. that load like twenty minutes. I couldn't keep that in. Are you crazy? Invasion USA. I'll say it again. Invasion USA. Now, like I said, he does quantity is not there, mm. but from eighty one to eighty eight, like everything he put out was fucking gold. I mean, there's no reason this guy didn't couldn't have kept working. You know. Yeah, I don't think they were box office smashes like they were supposed to be, but they're all, like, most of these are cult classics. Yeah. Like, The Prower is a cult clash, a classic. I don't know about Abduction. I don't know about Blood Rage and the cult, whatever, but. The uh, Blood Rage sucks. Fr Friday 13th Part 4, you know, is most people's favorite. It's my. my and it, what it was my, critically acclaimed when it came yeah, out, though. Yeah. Missing in Action was critically acclaimed. I mean, they made it end up making three of them. Invasion USA, okay. Alice Cooper, he's back. It was a really good music video, just in general. Red Scorpion yeah. is one of Dolph Lundgren's best movies, especially back from the eighties. That's not Rocky yeah. Four. You know what I mean? Like, but that's what I'm saying. Those. There's no reason yeah. this guy could have no. just kept making bangers. Yeah, you know? I don't, I, yeah, but they weren't. Like I said, they weren't box office successes then. You know, or maybe something happened in his life and he went another. I don't know. Well, he did move, Can't like you said, you. he did move the TV for quite some time. But that was later. That was in 2000. You still had 12 years to cover. Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. I, I guess maybe, maybe if we do like a, you know, put him in the An Star of the Week uh, category, we can find yeah, out more about his backstory. Yeah, we can figure more stuff out. Now, uh, one thing I didn't know about this, and you're actually, you, you're the one who kind of filled me in on yeah. this, is uh, Chuck Norris's brother is involved in like a lot of his movies. Pretty much everything. Yeah. In one way or another. So but was, it's not was, just like... Yeah, it's Aaron Norris. This is Chuck's brother. And he's he's a stuntman among director and writer. Because he, he co-wrote this movie. The screen... Uh, yep. The, the story. script. Not the screenplay. Chuck did the, scre the screenplay with... The screenplay, the yeah. Yeah. But Aaron Norris, Norris was Chuck's... This is their brother. So he was a stunt double for three movies. I guess they were like... Super ridiculous stunts because Chuck normally does all his stunts, and it's only in three yeah. movies. Out of all the stuff Chuck's done, he's only had a stunt double for three things, and they were mostly early in his career. So, but I, I can see the, the movie probably, company saying, "Yeah, Chuck, you're not doing this. We have to film the rest well, of the movie." Well, the one is like I said, is Breaker Breaker in '77, which I don't know if I've ever seen, but I know that's a semi movie. So maybe it had yeah. something to do with crashing a semi at one point in time. They're not going to let Chuck do that. No, absolutely you know, not. Uh, you know, he was a stunt double and good guys were black and memory serves me correct. It's been a long time since I've seen that. That was a mix between gunplay and and fighting and, and kung fu, you know, martial arts. Okay. So I'm assuming there might be some crazy uh something in the, you know what something. i mean something yeah i mean it might be a, a major fall could be a car car crash or whatever and whatnot and then the other one was a force of one so but i don't know what he would be in there but the, yeah he's been basically a stunt coordinator for just about every single one of chuck norris's movies he's done other stuff on tv he said he directed he's also a, good a hell chunk. of a writer he's directed a good chunk of chuck norris's stuff and then yeah he's uh well, he hasn't written too much. Is more of a producer, is more of a stunt guy, producer, and director than a writer. 
I'm trying to look at some of the other writing, uh, what's it called, that he has uh, credits. Well, his writing, you only know, his evasion, you say uh, he's uncredited for Missing Action 3 Braddock. Top Dog, he did the story. Logan's War, Bound by Honor is the TV movie. Sons of Thunder TV series, but he was a creator. I don't even okay. think that went anywhere, though. But Chuck Norris was in it playing his Walker, Texas Ranger, so it might have been a, a spinoff. Oh. Uh- yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he did, you know, uh, a couple episodes of Walker and then Peace River, which is in pre-production you know, it, now. It, it, it's pretty cool, though, because usually, like, stunt guys aren't known for being writers, or usually writers don't end up on screen. Or, you know what I mean? Like, this guy's kind of done it all. Um, yeah. You know. It's just it's cool. I mean, you know? I mean, this last thing this guy did was he was in Ant Man for utility stunts. It's listed. Okay, he had a couple years off. I mean, he's, he's getting old, so yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's Chuck Norris's brother, so Chuck Norris is up there. He also played the punk in Lone Wolf McQuaid. Huh. Yeah, he's got some actor credits. Yeah. I love you, Philip Morris. Stunts. I didn't know that movie had stunts. I guess technically okay. anything, any movie, like anything is considered a stunt. We, we, we think of stunts as over-the-top fights and car crashes. Oh, but yeah, even any, running down a yeah, hall would be yes, considered a stunt. Yeah. You know, with, with an actor yeah. that wants someone tweaking an ankle <laughs> or whatever, something, you know, could affect and They cut the a corner too sharp and they, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They could trip and fall, smash their head in the corner of a wall. I mean, worse, stupider shit. I'm sure okay. has happened. So, Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And we've pretty much talked about Chuck. This is right in the middle of Chuck's heyday of his movies. You know, he was an actor all the way back. Technically the 68 was his first thing, but they did his technical. That was technically his first thing, but the big thing was, Way of the Dragon with Bruce Lee in 72. Yeah. And then that catapulted into and a... And he co- wore that horrible red skin-colored sweater at the end. <laughs> but he didn't... You know, that was 72, but he didn't get his first, like, full break until 77 with Breaker Breaker. But he did some other things before that, and it just snowballed. Chuck was still competing in, in the 70s, and even in the 80s with his karate, but... And... Th- I wanted to bring that up before yeah. we get too far in. Uh, my uncle, Bob Ziak. Um, His uncle got beat up by Chuck Norris. I don't think they ever I know. I'm, I'm joking. I was I joked about it when you talked about it last I, time. I, I, no, but I would, I would believe it because, like, some of these action movie stars are kind of a little bit foofy, and they don't know their shit. Well, some of these action movie stars, especially now and in certain movies, like, all you need to do is know martial arts. You didn't actually have to be a badass. Like Jean Claude Dan Damme started out as a ballet ballerina. Yeah. He was a ballet dancer and he learned martial arts and he could do kicks and splits and crazy things. It doesn't mean Jean Claude Dan Damme could out there and kick the shit out of someone. No, but what I was that's what I was saying. Like there was cool. yeah. le, there was legit action stars back then who you wouldn't want to fuck with. You know, and Chuck they were like your box them. office guys, yeah. not like your backup guys. My uncle used to compete in Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, go to these karate tournaments. Obviously, MMA and UFC wasn't a thing yet. No. So they had a lot of these tournaments and stuff. And he said that Chuck showed up to two events that he was at, and they were like six years apart. And he said one was like in the mid-70s, so this is probably like your breaker breaker time and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was after the Bruce Lee thing because he was a huge fucking deal. Mm -hmm. He still competed. Like, he was acting, and he would still yeah. go to these martial arts competitions well, that, that's and how, sign up. That's how he got into with Bruce Lee. Is he, kept meet, he kept meeting Bruce Lee at the, the events when you, when you watch the documentaries and hear Chuck talk yeah. about him. He kept meeting him at these events, and Chuck's winning all these events, and they became friends. And then he eventually he was like, I want to put you in my movie. And he's like, you know, only if you let me hit you a couple times. I can't just let you beat the yeah. shit out of me. You know, he's like, I got a reputation. I'm still fighting. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, they had that cool fight scene. Of course, obviously, Bruce yep. has to win, but. But, I mean, even, so, like, the second time, he said it was, like, you know, early 80s. Um, yeah. Which would have been, like, 82, 83. At this ta- point, 
he is a massive star, or at least, you know, He's becoming big, big. a massive star, yeah. In the early 80s. And he's, he's still starting. signing up, yeah. and he's still competing. Still kicking ass. Like, when my uncle told me that, because usually you think once he got in the movies, it's like, all right, we don't have to compete no more. We're making money this way. We're doing this and that. Dude, Chuck just loved yeah, fucking it, fighting. It, it, that, but that's like Dolph Lundgren. We'll get into that more when we cover a movie with him, Maine. The fucking yeah. guy is literally a rocket scientist. Yeah. He's got a degree from MIT. The thing is, an IQ of 146 or 140. Like, it, I mean, it's, it's something it's, high. And then he was the European and Australian and maybe the Asian at one point, Cushion Karate champion. Yeah. Also. <laughs> Like, but he's also guy. a massive guy. Yeah. So well, like, there's there's like one video of him fighting. He's you know, it's like the early '80s. That dude he's fighting was like half his size, unfortunately. But like, it's just like yeah. See, this is why weight chance. classes are a thing. <laughs> it's not a chance, but, but he's still legit. Like people say he he was legit. I mean, you see him in Rocky, Rocky Four. He's just a fucking monster. Then you know. Yeah. I mean, he's still a monster now. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like. You see no, he was Masters definitely Universe. a fucking. And like, in the, uh, some of his other movies that people don't know about, or the other '80s films he did, like Red Scorpion, they would just mention like he's just he's just a total badass. Yeah, well, even in like um, like Masters of the Universe or whatever, you know, um, when you're playing He Man, you gotta be fucking yeah, gotta be a big you know, dude. a badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was he was born to be He Man, man. That's like was one of the best roles. For him. Anyway, we're get we're yeah. straying we'll, off. Again, we'll get but yeah, we'll get there one yeah. day. We'll get there. But that's we basically have, we have what we were saying. Brandon Lee and and Dolph Lundgren movie soon. So Yeah, it's coming soon. up. Soon. It's on there. It's on the list. Now, the only reason I did bring that up though is because although everyone knows all the jokes of Chuck Norris, which we have to say a couple yeah. because it's our first Chuck Norris, you know, episode, like they say, uh underneath his beard is not a chin, but just another fist. Yeah. You know? There's actually a photo um, of that. It was like beard separation. There's a fist coming out bunch and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or uh, like uh, Chuck Norris doesn't swim. Water just wants to be around him. Like that kind. You know? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. there's all these jokes about Chuck Norris. But water, the thing water is. Water just moves out of the way. There's, there's tons of different yeah. variants of that. Yeah. There's books about it. You can buy books with Chuck Norris facts. Um, But it's not because of just the movies he did. It's because he was. A legit, He's a badass. legitimate badass. He was, he was probably the first. I mean, I'm sure there was others, but he's the first major movie badass that really was a badass that people knew about. Like there might, yeah, there might have been, there like, might have been others, but he was like the big star. You know, they weren't big like him. You know, I'm sure there's other badasses no. that acted whatnot, but oh, never sure. the fame of Chuck Norris. You know, and like. I hate to say it, but like at one point, Steven Seagal was in that category of but, being a movie star well, who we all was thought he was actual... a badass, but he's not. He he knew the disciplines. I'll give him the credit. He knew the he had the information on like up keto, uh, fucking yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, and... a keto is is fake. fake I know martial arts. I know, but that, the that's thing, all. What, that's what all really he really worked... did. I mean, he studied other stuff, but Aikido is like his his bread and butter. He's a legit. Like grandmaster yeah. teacher, like the the first one of the West to ever make you know super fucking crazy, whatever. But but like you told it's, me, but it's what he has it's, going, it's it's fake keto. Right, but what what you told? Oh, bullshito. <laughs> bullshito, yeah. But I what think you of the told fucking me? Word, yeah. No, but you made up a new one. I actually want to hold on to that too because we, we might use that again. What? But what you told me is. It, the reason he was a badass wasn't because he knew all this shit. Because the guy's like six seven, like three hundred pounds. Well, he wasn't then. Like he, yeah, he was still. A big he's always guy been then, tall though. though. Yeah, he was still like two hundred plus pounds, probably or around two hundred pounds. Yeah, he's and he's a big like dude. six yeah. six or something. Like he's like six five, yeah. six six. Yeah, we didn't real like. Yeah, you thought he was a lot shorter, but no, he's. Yeah, yeah he's people, massive. We looked it up. I think he was six six or six five, something like that. Yeah, he's a big dude. So. Even a guy that size with a little bit of martial arts knowledge, I want nothing no, to like, fucking well, do with. Well, he's legitimately got super fast hands. He le- legitimately, like, he could wing chung the fuck out of someone with his fucking rapid, you know, punches or whatnot. I'm not saying he couldn't yeah. beat someone up, but he's not... 
I wouldn't put him. He ain't him no Chuck in, Norris. Yeah, I wouldn't put him as a Chuck Norris. He's no fucking Dolph Lundgren. You know what I mean? Like he's none of those fucking guys. Yeah. He's, he he beat the shit out of the average person easily. But I'm talking like someone We're that's gonna... like trained. He doesn't stand a fucking chance. I'm sorry. He, no, he practices no. fake well, martial arts for the most part and has a, a has a dabbling of the other stuff. But I think it's mostly for fucking movies. You know. One day. I do want to go a little more in depth on him and we'll have to pick a movie that's actually worth watching. And most people are going to say, Oh, under oh, siege Jesus. or whatever. No man. Like I know hard to kill or marked for death. Those are like two of the best ones. Maybe we'll have to double feature them. No, cause they probably deserve their own. Yeah, they do. But then again, it's Steven skull. So we could kind of lump it together too, though. Yeah. Like we could kind of just join it up. A little. One, one mega episode of his two best movies, probably back in the day. Just do like a five hour fucking sit Not down. Or maybe it's like just do both movies like a maybe we'll just compare them. Yeah, yeah. Instead like of actually which, doing which the one's breakdown, better because they're because they're they're you know, you could do the breakdown sit through and then compare them. Because they're I think those are the two I have to go through his list again, but those are probably two of his best movies that people best. always say. It's marked but marked for death and and uh fuck. I know Mark for Death always gets tossed up there. Yeah. Um, and the other one, but I, I don't know why. Gets I'm, brought but up I'm, a lot now too, I'm though. Fucking pulling a mind, but yeah, but it wasn't hard to kill. That's the one. Yeah, but hard there, to kill. It, that's like his commercial. That's like the commercial movie. newer. It it doesn't have the grit and and the the chops of the other movies. It's still it's it's like his third best movie, probably third or fourth. But he's done so many movies. It's not like saying third or fourth is like still really good. You know what yeah, I mean? He's done in comparison yeah, to what else he's yeah, done. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm try I know there's one other one that's back then that was really good, and I'm not sure if it's third or fourth. But Under Siege is uh, it's up there. It's it's definitely a fucking quality movie. But anyway, is um oh shit. I'm sorry. I had what? this open while we were talking about it. Um, <laughs> this is fucking above the law. 1980. Above the Law, that's the other one. Yeah. So there's Mark say, for Death, that's like, Hard to Kill, and Above the Law. Yeah, the the holy trinity of, of, Seagal of uh, movies. Steven Seagal movies. Yeah, and then Under Siege is like number four. I knew there was another one. And then Out for Justice. Oh, shit, is that the fifth one then? Yeah, Out for Justice. Fuck. I forgot. There's more of them than I can remember. Yeah, Alfred so Justice he does have one. he does have some pretty good like. That's what I'm saying. I forgot stuff. about these movies. Like They're just so... They're so old and and like you don't think about them, like you know what I mean. Yeah, you no, just, I get it. And it's the goal, so you really don't want to think yeah. about it. Well, you know, he's just he's as as many movies as he does after these, after Under Siege, he made did like one or two other movies that were even worth a shit, and then the rest have been pure garbage. And he got fat, and then it's just they don't like fire down below. Cra- crazy I remember hippie. Was, yeah, but that was, was like big that was like theaters. his biggest. That was like his biggest production movie, probably besides Under Siege, and Under Siege Two. Yeah, you know what I mean, like that. Yeah, was, but that was like a serious drama. He played a fucking Native American Indian, like <laughs> tribal land, and it had like a message. You know what I mean, like it. It was like a like a real movie. He was trying to put like heart into it, but it's still like it's Stephen Seagal. It's I, it's, a, it's a joke. I did skip one from his heyday. Um, from '94 on Deadly Ground, but I've never heard of that. It, it's it's good. It's good. Not, it's not like okay. the other ones, but it's good though. It's a good one. So like his early mo- his first few movies, like five or six movies, are all like watchable. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're more than watchable. They're fucking classics. They're literally classics. See, I just thought like, there was like one or two that were good, and the rest was just like a fucking no, shit no, show. No, no, I forgot. I, I I knew there was like there's like three that are like amazing, and I forgot there was the other two. And then even on Deadly Grounds, a good one. And then you have the newer movies, which would be Under Siege, Fire Down Below, Under Siege Two, and then I think the Executive Glimmer Man, De- Executive Decision. Eh, I didn't like Glimmer Man too much. People I haven't like seen him. it, but that was the year before uh, Fire Below. Yeah, that was another weird one. He uh, that's when he started <laughs> becoming a Buddhist. Okay. So he was. So his movies reflected his personal life, yeah, like what he yeah. was trying. Okay. So oh like boy. that that was when I think he started becoming a Buddhist, and then eventually he decided he was going to be a, a songwriter and make CDs, yeah, and stuff, and he yeah. didn't really act as much, and 
yeah, then that's when he started getting fat, and then he was a uh, his it was he was Guru Segal. Guru, <laughs> I don't know. We're we're we're, we're supposed to be Buddha. talking about Chuck Norris though. Well, we'll we'll, we'll yeah. get there. We yeah. will. We we don't have it on we'll the cover. list yet. Um, but we will pick at least the, pro- like, the, the first problem two is, that is you there's said. so many things to go through doing one a week. It's hard to cover every genre. Like it when is. you start breaking down these action movies, you don't realize how many of them there are. You don't think about like you're like holy fuck, there's this this. And then you hit, find you know hidden gems like Nemesis, like we did. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you then it brings <laughs> open the whole other can of worms you're like oh my god i forgot about this movie this movie this guy made this movie this and then, movie and this movie too so we'll talk you know about I mean? nemesis and then be like oh what about cracker jack which wasn't fucking yeah, yeah. big at all but yeah you no, know but that brings i'm just saying that brings up you know we talk oh. about nemesis i think about cyborg that had van damme and i'm like oh that's one of his uh-huh. hidden gems that's good even though it's a little By the slow way, what? that is my one per episode uh <laughs> of me mentioning cracker jack yeah because yeah. like in the last one, five one, episodes one i mentioned episode, it at least yeah. once <laughs> you know, we were talking about Scott Atkins, and then we're we're gonna introduce you to yeah. Mark Dacakis soon, still with only the strong. And this doesn't even cover Dude. Tom Berenger. He did the substitute, and uh, oh yeah, substitute and, and Sniper with Billy Zane. Those that's another amazing movie he did. But we will be talking about Billy Zane very shortly. <laughs> Yo, um, I, I'm seriously, I'm getting palpitations because I cannot wait to talk about this. I actually forgot. You know, what, yeah. How? I forgot. How? Oh, He's never mind. I remember. I remember. Of... I remember. I remember. Yes. Well, that should be right now, He's actually, the... right? I, it should. It should. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm saying. Should. Like, yeah, I'm getting yeah. fucking nervous. Yeah. Um, Dude, I his forgot performance. About that yep. that means. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Ray, it's underrated. We'll get there. And then, I mean, that just, like I said, I can just go into that. But then horror is the same way. You know it is. I mean? so. Real quick before you get off, I did get this for Wolfman. This is the actual laser disc of Nemesis, and it's in like pristine condition. Mm-hmm. And I was even gonna say, you know what? No, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> but no, because it's so it's in very good condition. So awesome. But I wouldn't be in this action movie. Re- I still love horror. I always will. Yeah. Well, I, but I I'm wouldn't be in this you, action yeah. movie renaissance if it wasn't for the work that we do as friends and talking. You know what I mean? Oh, I have um, many. I have many other things to show you, my friend. Many. Oh, other I'm things. sure. Because well, we also have been on this little laser disc kick for a couple weeks. If right anyone's now, got a so laser like, disc there's... player, they want to donate to the Grindhouse. Oh, if seriously, anyone's listening that... to this. That'd be amazing so that we can actually watch some of this stuff and then, you know, throw up some reviews and show some footage and stuff because neither one of us owned a, well, you kind of owned one at one point in time, but it broke. The right? belt is broke. Yeah. And then it broke. The belt. Yeah. Yeah. And it broke. Although yeah. you should give it to me because I do have a soldering iron. I'm kind of handy. I might be able to look up stuff and try to be able to fix it. I might be able to tear it apart. Couldn't we? Uh, well, I was actually going to say, couldn't we just probably like order another belt? Like That's a what I'm saying. Belt That's what I'm even. saying. I, I, I can take it apart and try to find stuff so next time so you come I'll, down you I'll should bring it, it to I'll... me yeah and, and kind right, of yeah. semi hand i mean i'm not perfect but i'm semi as long as it's not too crazy i, mean, I, I, I know it doesn't have a remote but yeah. all the buttons are on the yeah, front you can get God, a universal so... remote yeah but we don't even need it because like no, i said I'm all sa- the buttons i mean who i'm can... saying yeah we could get one there's but, options but anyway if anyone has a, a laser disc they want to donate to the grindhouse That'd be awesome because the ones I'm looking at currently run between three hundred and seven hundred dollars. So, I, yeah. I I don't have that money to spend on that. Never mind on other things for that, a that device for a device that plays a dead technology. Yeah, yeah, a dead I a, justify a, spending a, that a, kind a of a dead technology that plays a dead technology. I can't <laughs> I can't spend that money right now unless we we're rolling in money, and then I'd be okay with it. I will tell you, though, as soon as yeah. we do get some kind of deal, whether it's syndication or whatever, the first thing I'm buying PC. is going to be a laser. Yeah, a good one. A PC. A, a good, good PC. One. And then, then we'll work on a laser disc. Oh, no. I'm going to get a PC before we all ever right, get big. Right. But as soon as we start making it, I just want to. This is. Yeah, the Terminator 2 laser disc. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. God. We, we have some good ones. I got Jurassic Park today in the mail. Yep. Um, also, I got you a copy. Uh, Return. Return of, of the uh, Jedi. Yeah. So I got to track down. Uh, I mean, I like New Hope, but 
I prefer Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi personally. Empire, but, I think, is the of the original. It's the the best. It's the best. I mean, it's it's the best of all of them, honestly. Yeah, overall, I haven't seen mm. the newest ones, but of the prequels and the Trust original me. four, the, the newer, the, the newer. I haven't seen the newest newest one, but again, again, we're moving off topic because we do this stuff. But right, of the newest, they're just a rehash of the original trilogy. They really are, and adding in a little bit of the middle trilogy. That's all these new ones are. It's nothing new. It's nothing original. So they're just changing the characters around L- with the same literally, story. Literally, have you you haven't seen the Force Awakens or anything? No. I have the Force Awakens and I have the Last Jedi on on Blu-ray. So if you want, we okay. can watch them one day. You know what I mean? When we're hanging out, and you can see they're literally a re like the storylines is is literally the first fucking trilogy with a little bit of the prequel trilogy. It's like thrown together and rehashed. Like the, it, it's not original bullshit. With it's like rehashed with. The so same, you know what's going to happen in the movie, even if you've never seen it. To a certain it. extent. They, they threw some twists here and there, but you, the twist may be different than what you think is going to happen to a certain extent, but it, it still happens vaguely the same of what you... You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just... It's I, just I don't even think I'd want to waste my time on that shit. Like, do you do you even know, like, who Kylo Ren is and stuff like that? Like, do you have you heard uh, Yeah, I'm familiar, like... Um, the actor that plays the new bad no, guy. No, 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 no. I'm talking um, like, do you know who he is in the story? Like, you've heard enough to like... No, I don't know any of the... Okay, all right. The, so I'm just... All right. Never mind that. I'm gonna... But I do know there is, like, the daughter of uh, Luke, right? Or Leia? No, there is no the, daughter. Isn't the there, girl? No. Okay. L- Luke See, and Leia are oh, brother wait, no. and sister. They can't have kids. No, 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 no. I know, no, no. I thought it was one of their kids. No. But not, it was Han Solo no, and Leia. No, no. Okay. All right. Kylo Ren, the bad guy, is the son of Han Solo and Leia. Okay, that's the guy. Okay. All right, I knew they had a kid. Yeah. I knew the, the girl. That. The girl is a mystery, was. and I think you find out who she is in the third, in the third prequel, like the end. But she's still okay. a mystery of who she is. At least to me. Okay. I mean, other people will know, and they're going to post spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I just didn't want to see that fucking train wreck. I just wasn't going to wait. I mean, I got to buy it on Blu-ray eventually because I had the other two, but... Yeah, you want to complete the set, yeah, obviously, I gotta complete, but... Yeah, but it's, it's okay. still a fucking So I was right about wreck. something, though, that Han Solo and Leia had a kid. Well, that, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, movie. they have a kid, and it's in the new movie, and then now he's the bad guy, and then obviously he's going to have conflicting good side, dark side. He worships Vader, sure. his grandfather. Sure. You know he's got he's got his helmet. The it's like half burnt and plastic. You know what I mean? Like he worships it. That's why he wears a mask like he does. It's like his version of being Vader. So now you have Vader yeah. versus Mystery Girl, who Luke was kind of the mystery person in the original one versus versus Vader. Yeah, it's just it's yep. all rehashed. It's all and like, it is no the, and, literally and, and, the and story. Plot yeah, and instead are the of same. uh, and then there's the whole like there's no like oh I'm your father to the girl. It's you know he's. Leia and Han's fucking kid, you know what I mean. So that's what yeah. you find out. You're like, and then instead of instead of I'm your father, of, you find out oh he's their kid. You're like oh that's the big reveal. You know what I mean. You're like, and instead of Yoda, Luke Skywalker becomes that character to the girl. Sort of, yeah. Eventually, like teaches her or whatever. He doesn't really teach her. She goes and looks for him. He's kind of a dick. <laughs> I don't think Mark Hamill really <laughs> wanted Mark to Hamill. be in those. I don't think Mark Hamill really yeah. wanted to be in these movies, but but the way they wrote him, he does. And they threw they threw enough money at him that he's like, eh, right. yeah, he doesn't really help her too much. That's the problem with the movie. She pretty much learns and knows how to do everything without being taught. That's what everyone's one of the biggest problems. You all of a sudden, she's super powerful after the like midway through the first movie. She just knows how to do everything without <laughs> ever meeting fucking yeah. uh, Luke. She just starts learning, yeah. Luke doesn't actually Bullshit. teach her anything. He's kind of a dick to her. And, like, he does help her but at that's the like, end. And it's a, but I'm, I don't want to get too much, but, yeah. Right, right, right. But the whole journey of the original movies was Luke learning yes. how to use yes. the fo- You know yes. what I mean? There, there's literal to no journey. Like, one of the other side characters in, I want to say it's the first movie, literally picks up a lightsaber like they like she is called luke's lightsaber on another planet right so they they find this lightsaber at this cantina so she now has luke's original lightsaber because he doesn't have it anymore okay uh and so 
one of the other side characters literally picks up this lightsaber and gets in a lightsaber battle with Kylo Ren and doesn't die. <laughs> it's like he's just doing, like, you know, and then it makes you have questions like, oh, is he another hidden Jedi? Like, what's going on? Because Jedi <sighs> fighting with a lightsaber was an art. You can't just no, yeah, not any yeah, yeah. Just person would pick one up and be able to. That's why it was so badass yeah. when like Darth yeah. Vader and Darth Maul were able yeah. to fucking. But he or, he uh, was trained. He know, was trained as a stormtrooper. He was like a defector, so I guess he has some hand to hand combat. But you know, with the different weapons and stuff. But I guess it's yeah. But that's it's not, the it's not, saying it's not that any stormtrooper could, could pick, pick up a, light a fucking light and be yeah. So it's. <laughs> I'm not watching them, dude. I'm not. I'm I'm fucking disgusted it's, right now. Yeah, it, yeah. It's. Invasion Thank USA just turned into a crit- USA. It just turned into a criticism of Star Wars and having even finished. But I have to say, since we're talking about Star Wars, I actually did like Revenge of the Sith. I know it got a little, I did. little heat, but that was the best of the three prequel trilogy by far. Yeah, the first, you, the first you and the know, second you one. You want to know were, why Revenge of the Sith was good though? Because it was dark. Because it and took. Gritty. T- well, it took two fucking movies to get there because uh, well, the Phantom uh, well, Menace and Attack of the Clones all built up to yeah. Revenge of the Sith. But, but I feel like you but could just you watch Revenge of the Sith through that. You, but I feel like you could just watch Revenge of the Sith and be entertained even if you didn't know much about the Oh, beginning. you could. But no, I feel like it, I feel like if you take the first two movies and you edit them down into one movie, it would actually be really good. Just get rid of all the other bullshit, get rid of Jar Jar Binks. Get rid of all, unless he turns out to be the secret emperor lord and the whatever. Then we kind of need him in the beginning. But yeah, but but like like you said, take take about you have like you have like thirty five like, percent. You have like five or six hours of movie that if you cut down to like two and a half hours, you'd have a really good. You're movie. fine. Yeah. Like, you know what? We and, should and fuck then... with an edit. We should <laughs> fuck with an edit and try to make those two movies into like one coherent movie. Well, it won't be people perfect, will probably thank I'm us. I'm sure. Yeah. No, then, but yeah. But anyway, so back to evasion. You say. Yes. We'll go back. Go back to Chuck Norris kicking ass. So, all right. So we don't really need to go over Chuck Norris. He has a million movies. We want to. You, for I, you know, yeah, we'll just. We, I'll mention a couple. If people want to check out some that haven't some of the movies they haven't seen, Good Guys Wear Black is a really good one. It's from '78. Not a lot of people have seen it. These are the early ones. Most people are the newer ones. The Octagon is from 1980. That's a really good one. And Eye for an Eye and Silent Rage, 81, 82. They're a little more drama-like, but are very good. But they're still Chuck Norris kicking ass. Lomo sure. McQuaid is cheesy, just kind of like this one a little bit. But I think it's overall a better picture than Evasion USA. But I like Evasion USA better to a certain extent. It's it's hard. Well, you have it's your hard. Reasons, like, though. I have my reasons. Yeah, but I think Lone Wolf and Quaid is a better movie. That's eighty three. Obviously, you have Delta Force one and two. There, uh, people all know about them. That's why I'm not mentioning them. Code of Silence is another really good one. Uh, that I'm pretty sure it has to do with mob stuff with Chuck Norris. And then you have the Hero and the Terror. It's him tracking down uh, a serial killer. Okay. And you know he does his little kung fu shit in there. And then you have the Hitman. So, I don't want to give nothing away of that, but Chuck Norris, mob movie, plays the hitman. Got to watch the movie. It's, it's, it's 90, 1991. That was his last, like, major awesome fucking movie. He did, you know, he's done other movies after that, but to me. Wrong. Oh, yeah, I know. You like Forest, Forest Warrior. Warrior. But that's like a kid's movie. It's Chuck not, Norris turns into a bear. It's like a kid's movie. He's a, he plays a fucking shapeshifter. But I'm talking about that's like his well, his last badass like manly man movie like. Yeah. Now he he was in Sidekicks with I think it's Jonathan Brandis. Yeah, who's dead. Who? Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately you know, should happen. Suicide. He was yeah. a promising young uh, actor, he, unfortunately, and had his troubles he, with mental health and drugs. It, and unfortunately, it, it was sucks because he was in a lot of good he was. stuff. He was, he was very was good talented, in it. and he was probably on the list with. The core is of kids that were probably molested back then, because he had that yeah. pretty boy image. He was a, 
you know, young. I young would put him in the category even with like River Phoenix. No, that, that's what I'm like, talking about. That whole yeah, uh, that whole era of like the way they looked. I mean, River Phoenix yep. is probably fucking molested for all we know. Yeah, the way, but I'm saying even as an yeah, actor, yeah, 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 as like yeah, a, ch- yeah, a young yeah, actor, yeah. he was good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably why Christian Slater. Well, we'll so talk about Jonathan too. Brandis someday. Yeah. I think we should. He deserves it. Yeah, he does. Also, though, Chuck Norris was in Top Dog, uh, second billing to a dog. <laughs> yeah, but this is like his newer stuff. I don't even want to really get into this stuff. Okay, but the one thing he didn't say, and I will say, Walker, comma. Everyone knows Texas that, Ranger. Though. I was talking about his movies that people may not have seen or heard of from his. Past. I'm just saying if you know, if, they know, you if know. anyone is watching this review or listening and you haven't seen Walker Texas fucking Ranger, that's some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in a movie or a TV show. It's really bad, but adds to the it's a product fun, of its time. Adds to the funness and hilarity of a guy in his Canadian tuxedo roundhouse kicking everyone instead of using a gun. <laughs> the only person the only person who could literally wear denim fucking socks to a denim beanie and everything denim in between and still be okay in my book I, I said Jay Leno also but you hate Jay Leno we went over this before but Jay Leno and Chuck Norris the only two people in my book that actually can wear denim on denim and, and they can be okay <laughs> That's it. Only two people. No one but they else. can't. But they can't be in the same room at the same time, though. <sighs> the world might implode. I don't know if they're if they're both wearing their Canadian tuxedos. <laughs> it might open a black hole that sucks all men. Actually, it's a good idea. They should do that now. Yeah, they should get together. <laughs> they should get together the fucking, right uh, now. Campaign rally. Get right now. They should get together and suck the world into a black hole. Chuck Norris did eventually get out of the movies, although he did make some cameos in like The Expendables yeah. two and stuff. Um. But mostly, he was doing the uh, Total Gym, which, you know, you probably saw the infomercials in the 90s. Uh, He also had action jeans, which were basically like maternity jeans because they were like super stretchy. So you could do splits and kicks without ripping your crotch out. The original jeggings, but looked like jeans. Yes. Very ahead of their time. Yeah, ahead of their time. Um, Also was on the campaign trail with Mike Huckabee in 2008. Uh, less said about that, the better. And he is a hardcore Christian. Hardcore yeah. because he's Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see him trying to slam it down everyone's throat like other people. Uh-uh. I think he just kind of keeps himself. Uh-uh. He's no, um, uh, he's no Kurt Cameron. <laughs> yeah, thank Christ. <laughs> or uh, Alan Thicke <laughs> with their with their Christianity. Alan Thicke? I'm pretty sure he was pretty bad at that too. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure it was him. Oh shit! You just opened up a whole other door that I gotta look into. <laughs> now Kevin Sorbo is the man of the yeah, Christian movies. Yeah, Kevin Sorbo. He's in like Kevin Sorbo. Pure you flicks. used to be cool if you're listening to this. Actually, it'd be kind of cool if you did listen to this. Yeah, it'd be great. And if you'd like to come on <laughs> and defend yourself, that'd be yes, awesome. Well, the first and only time we'll get political talk we'll yeah. talk religion with kevin sorbo yeah and kevin sorbo like i said he was in god's not dead um but pure flicks is the christian movie company that's been making all of these christian movies that have been coming out lately um they <sighs> are that, terrorists and they need to be stopped who's that other who's that other dude hold on in reference to hey, there's there's another one that was like a big person and whatever and now all of a sudden he's like a fucking jesus freak Oh, there's tons. Uh, I know, I know. This was like, um, like a the fuck is he? Well known. Yeah. I keep getting these tissues. Ugh. Why is he not listed in here? I know he's in this fucking movie. What movie is this? Oh, there he is, Jason London. He's another one now. Jason London? The fuck is that? He, if I saw him, would I know him? Yeah, if you saw his picture. He was he was in um he was like the main dude in um that fucking seventies movie with everyone in it. Um Oceans Eleven? That no, the main seventies movie. 
Oh, oh, the um, uh, Days and Confused. Days and Confused. Yes, he's the main main guy in that movie. He was in. So this uh, guy's hardcore Christian. Yeah, he's hardcore Christian now. Oh. He just did. He saw there was a movie uh, that I just saw on uh, Netflix not long ago, and it turned out to be like super fucking Christian movie, and I'm like, I turned it off. No offense to anyone. If you want to believe, I just don't want to watch no. propaganda movies. I thought it was going to be a baseball movie, and I was really... I hate baseball, but I like baseball movies. You know what I mean? I like <laughs> a good underdog story, and the next you know, and it, I didn't know about these <laughs> about these movies. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate sex, but I love porn. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what? <laughs> I just... I don't you know, like, like Major League, man. That's fucking... Major League What's Two, that Kevin and Costner Major piece League of three. shit? No, that's that's oh what Field is? of Dreams. Oh, the Field of Dreams. It's not a bad movie. I mean, you got some older baseball movies that were good, but this guy was so he was in that. Ugh. He was in this movie called Out Cold, which was like supposed to be a raunchy 2001 ski comedy, like the old. I ski remember comedy, Out Cold, like ski, like you know, ski school back in the day. He was in Dracula Three, yep. The Legacy. He was in the Prophecy Uprising, these shitty movies, but he was in uh, he was in Dracula Two: The Ascension, Out Cold. You want, uh, you want to know what's not funny about Out trash. Cold? Um, the Rage. It actually does two. have some. It does have funny moments in it, and Zach Galifianakis it's, is in that. It movie. It is a funny movie. Yeah, it's a fun. It's a good movie. It, it is. It is. Yeah. He was in yeah. a bunch of Arasith videos. He was in something, though, that was like his big... Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything. Yeah, there was a TV show that I thought he was in that was like really big, but apparently not. But he he was billed, huh. like, what, you know, Days and Confuse and Al Cole and some of his other movies, he was billed as being, like, mm-hmm. one of those one of those dudes that were going to do all these movies. And then he just disappeared off the fucking planet after doing a bunch of really bad movies. And then apparently, yeah, Matthew went. McConaughey and Ben Affleck were the two actors from Days of the Confused who would go on and do everything. Yeah, there, I mean, there now. Well, yeah, the one, the one girl uh, went on to do a lot of stuff. She was the head douchey girl with when they were uh, hazing all the girls. I can't think of oh, her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in a shit ton of movies. Um, I just can't think. I, like, if you if I looked at it, I'd be able to tell you. Mila Jokovic? No. No, well Mila's in that movie too. Yeah, she did a shit ton of things too. She would no, no. She was the quiet stoner girl of the stoner kid. Yeah. His girlfriend. God Parker uh, Parker Joey Posey. Lauren. Parker Posey. She did a shit ton of things. That's the girl I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess Joey Lauren did a lot, but if you see her face, you'll know who I'm talking. You'll be like, oh that girl's in a ton of shit. Yeah. Oh my God. She was in. Yeah. Scream yeah. Three. Superman Returns. Blade Trinity. Yeah. 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 The girl. Oh, good for her. She was in the fucking Spice Girl movie. I mean, she's in a lot of. Like I'm just talking. About that. that was that was like a big movie. You know what I mean? She was in the Eye with Jessica Alba. I totally um, forgot there was a Spice Girls movie. Yeah. But it's a huge movie. You know, people like that were cast. Yeah. Oh. Like in the movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like. I I hope one day none of our Patreon backers uh, ask us to review that movie. Can't it's too big of a movie. We won't do it. Even, even oh, we review big movies. What? It's just big. We've reviewed big movies. It's no, just no. They're bigger. Would it have been in the Grindhouse? And that's the thing. The Spice Girls movie, no. unless it was in some kind of porno theater, <laughs> <laughs> would never be I'm in the sure Grindhouse. Where there's a porn version of that out there somewhere. Oh, I know there is. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. I'm sure there is. No, I'm telling you, I know there. No, I, I, I know you know. There might be, I, don't know. I was trying to, I was trying to, you know, back know. off a little bit, but you know, you want to double Be- down benefit on of it. The doubt. Yeah, you want to double down on it and be Look, like, here, let me show you. It, here is the porn version oh, of the I, movie off my shelf. I would definitely double down any one of them. Um, <laughs> we are going to have to review at least Debbie Does Dallas at some point because we are Grindhouse on Forty Second well, Street. Because it was iconic, and yeah. Huh? Why? Because it was iconic. Well, that and it's a porno, and every grindhouse theater had it. So at that point, why don't you just do Deep Throat? Well, 
Uh, baby yeah, I mean, steps. You, you can do them. I don't want to do them. I don't want to watch a porn and critique it with you. It's fucking weird, man. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, fine. It, uh, <laughs> Italian Stallion because it's Stallone, and that's it. <laughs> Dude, there there's a Big Mouth episode about this. <laughs> Where they Is there? <laughs> You don't talk about the cartoons with Yeah, the, the cartoon, yeah. Yeah. The, where they try to get the porn of a big actor like back in the day and then it ruins them because and I think it's called the Italian Stallion in the fucking show. Like they're making fun of Stallone. There's, well, that's the name of his that porn, yeah. I know, I know, but I'm saying there's an episode about where the two friends Go to watch, like, oh. Is that on Netflix? Them. Yeah, yeah. They just actually. All right, I think I'm just, gonna. Ha- I'm yeah. gonna have to watch it. Yeah, it's what it's. It's an acquired taste because it's Nick Kroll from the league and some other stuff or whatever, and he's. I'm, he can, very, I'm familiar he with. Can be, the yeah, he can be kind of annoying at times, but the show is actually very mm. funny. But Rafi from the league makes an appearance as one of the kids' friends, and he's hilarious in the show, and of course, because the guy who plays Rafi. Rafi's the man in the league. If anyone doesn't watch the league, you need to go watch the league. Even if you hate football, it's about friends busting what? each other's balls and Wasn't fucking it each FX other. That started the league. Yeah, yeah. It it has a lot to do about football and stuff, but it's because they're in a fantasy football league. But the thing about fantasy football league, it's about busting your friends' balls and 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 fucking with them. So yeah. like the show is about their lives and stuff. But the football kind of takes like a backseat, even though there's a lot of it, in, like a decent amount of it. But like, but it's not the driving force of yeah, the yeah. Show. You don't you don't need to know really much about football to get into the show. They'll they'll teach you everything you need to know. It's it's just about them fucking because you have. But you if, have you, Rafi, if you Rafi, like you have football, Taco, yeah. If you like football, and you haven't seen the league. What's wrong with you? Then it's definitely worth yeah, watching. Yeah, oh. Rafi, yeah. Taco, fucking. Um, is the league still going or is it over? No, it's been over the for a seasons. while. Yeah, it's been yeah. over for a while. Okay. What's his face? Dude, it sucks, man. Andre. Nick Kroll <laughs> has had a pretty shitty role of things, and I don't think he's a bad comedian or actor. But he just like, plays the same he character just picks... over and over again, though. That's his problem. He's well, no, he was in that no diversity fucking that fucking uh, Geico caveman thing. That remember that TV show? No. <laughs> on a- ABC, the Geico Cavemen the had their own show, and oh he plays God. one of the cavemen. Oh, my You've God. You've not seen this. I have no this. idea. No. God, Dude, we're, we're Nick so, Kroll does a stand-up so, segment. This is going to be so long, this one, because we are drifting so far well, off course. <laughs> we, we can do a part one and a part two, because we haven't done that in a while, and yeah. we missed the week. So. Yeah. so he plays a caveman, and these three cavemen, they live in present time. and Well, I, I know they, what the idea of the cavemen guys are, like... But they act like minorities because uh, one of them called like there's uh, a name like Magger. <laughs> Obviously, it's not what we think. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, there you are, acting like another Magger, like they want us to." And like it's like hijink oh, ensues. God. Like one of the cavemen's dating a girl, and her dad's like kind of racist against them. But they're having a party at a country club, and and anyway, Nick Kroll's character is like this super dry fucking. He's supposed to be like the uh, sarcastic, no dude? censor, yeah, the sarcastic, dry, no censor to him, like. But it, but he's dressed as a fucking caveman. Like he's got it's. I I know I know what the caveman commercials are. They were they're iconic. I didn't know they actually made a. Oh, well, wow. it only lasted a couple. Yeah. It only lasted a couple episodes. I see that. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, I forgot about this until a second ago. I'm just I'm looking at Richard Lynch, who's the main bad guy in this movie. And I was wondering what yeah. I can mention of like movies that he's in that are I mean, he's in a lot of stuff, but this fucking TV series just popped up and he did an episode in it. Oh my god. It's called Acapoco Heat. <laughs> it is so bad. And I remember it's from I thought it was older than nineteen ninety nine. I guess not. It should be older than 1999. <laughs> it probably had the mindset of like 1989. It had the mindset of like 1992, like literally. Okay, yeah, like Thunder in Paradise, like, Hawaii. Yes, Fly- yes, 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 dude. It's, yeah. it's it's straight up. It it plays like it's a fucking spinoff of Thunder in Paradise. Is the the intro to it 
is like one of the most glorious things ever because it's so bad probably, when you watch it. It's probably like Miami Vice, right? Oh, dude, it, it's it's worse. Miami Vice is actually Acapulco awesome. Acapulco Heat. Acapulco Yeah, no, heat. I like Miami Vice. But but Miami Vice came out 20 years before that. Yes, yes. You it know, play, I mean? It plays just like Miami Vice, but Miami Vice came out in the 80s. The show is so bad that it's worth watching the riff tracks it, but the problem is is there's literally like three seasons of it, I think. Like it's oh, one of those so it things actually where had quite a You you literally think that maybe you can watch like six, seven episodes and they probably would cancel it and you can laugh and whatever, but no, there's like Are it's you on watching Tubi. it right now? Is it on Tubi? It's on the Tubi. show. It used to be on um Hulu. And I was I started. Oh, Amazon to watch it Prime again. has it too with the subscription. Oh, does it? Okay, maybe it's on. Maybe it was on Prime that, that I saw it, not not Hulu. No, I think it was Hulu, because Hulu had a lot, bunch the, of yeah, old I, stuff I was gonna watch again. Hold, on, I'm on Tubi now. I just hit play. I just want to see this intro. Oh my god, you could probably just go to U- YouTube it too. I guess. Is oh, I don't even I don't even I. Oh I feel my like god, we should, we should show everyone. This song is awful, oh, dude. It's so bad, but it, it's it's hilarious though. <laughs> it's like a mix between Baywatch, Baywatch, Miami Vice, and Thunder in Paradise, like all in one. Yeah, yeah. There's a van with monitors in it. With what? A laptop. Okay, well it's not. Even, that makes sense, <laughs> dude. Dude, you don't even want to start breaking into the van and start breaking apart what they made <gasps> to look like. What? It's hilarious. It's wait, 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 wait. Hilarious. There is a guy doing karate near an endless pool. <laughs> then there's a Humvee. Back Dude, to the guy with is, karate. My face is turning bright red from laughing. I actually got a slight tears coming out. The first two episodes show a picture are of the world and then an explosion. The fr- <laughs> Sold. Sold. <laughs> Fucking take all my money. The first I'm the <laughs> first the first two episodes are like a mini movie, just like a lot of those series did. And like then this, Thunder and, and Paradise then did, Airwolf did it, A Team did it. Oh, that's r- like all those were like mini movies for the first two or three episodes, and then the series actually starts after them. I think I think Walker Texas Ranger did it. Actually, also I think because they were trying to make it like a movie, yeah. and Ni- then I it didn't get a I movie. I think Mi- Knight Rider may even did it. Also, actually, I think Knight Rider it. did do it. Actually, yeah, like all these uh, all these shows were like little mini movies to start. They're like two or three episodes. Fabio's in this thing. <laughs> what? Yes. I don't know how much Fabio? of a yes. I don't know how much of a fucking. <laughs> this is just one of those all shows right. I remember. Like when I was younger, and I'm just like, but I mean, I wasn't. I was 18 when this came out, actually. So, but to okay. me, that's like hold prime hold 90s. Watch later. Rob's like saving this. Need to watch this later. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> now I'm and now I'm actually interested in where it goes. And they're an hour long episode, 44 minute. Yeah. yeah. God, so it's not even like a 21 no, minute. No, 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 no. That's here. like back then. That's what. Actually, well, the other ones were shorter, <sighs> but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like. This was like there were some old ones like like Hunter, Silk Stockings, like there was these old cheesy crime dramas. They were all on there, and I remember watching them when I was younger. And I'm like, but those were older than '99. Right, it was all grouped together, and I'm like, oh man, I remember these. Like, I need <gasps> oh, to watch these. Again. Wait a minute, you're you're older than me. Do you remember Tequila and Bonetti? No, the talking dog. But no one understood the dog. It was like a boxer, and it was a detective, and the dog was his partner. And no, oh no. boy, that the intro of that should, well, should, TV should we, show. Should we, should we actually do like crime dog episode? Because you could do Top Dog with Chuck Norris. You could do Tequila and whatever. We could do James Belushi with the uh, whatever oh, his fucking Belushi, the fucking, and then you have Tom Hanks and Hooch. Hooch, yeah, that's like, the like, big one. Like, yeah, dude, we, we totally we... do a fucking dog <laughs> cop fucking episode. <laughs> but, oh my god, wait a minute. <laughs> fucking Everyone gray tequila, just... and Benet- tequila and Benetti starts out like the cop accidentally shoots this black girl. And the music is very somber, and then he's like, he's holding the girl and this and that. And then like... The, the title screen goes away, and all of a sudden, it's like this boxer just humping another dog, and he's talking with, like, a black guy's voice, 
And it's like, whoa, what are these the, the same fuck? fucking show? Dude, you will not you will not be disappointed. I guarantee it. Uh, but you know heat. what? What else what else do we have for the breakdown of invasion? Because we are breaking this into two parts. We haven't yeah. done well, a two part in go a while. Th- I gotta go through I was gonna go through Richard Lynch for a second, Billy Drago, and then the trivia, and then call that part one. Okay. All right. Yeah, and then we'll go. So I have to go back to his older work. So Richard Lynch is the main bad guy. If you've seen his face and, you, and you've seen these older movies, you know who I'm talking about. But there are a handful of classics that he was in. <sighs> he was cop in The Happy Hooker, 1975. That's not the classic. I'm just joking around. He was in an episode of Serpico, okay. the TV series in 1976. Oh, all right, no, really uh, all, all joking aside... So he was in Death Sport in 1978. Fucking classic, shitty David Carradine movie from yep. the 70s. You know who David Carradine is, right? Uh, wasn't he the bad guy in uh, Lone Kill, Wolf McQuaid? It was Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Kill might, Bill. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he might have been actually in Lone Wolf McQuaid. And the bad guy in that. I actually don't remember. But yeah, I mean, he's he's he, he played... He was the... He stole the role from Bruce Lee inadvertently that sent Bruce Lee back to China. He's the guy that does Kung Fu, the legend, like the the, the movie series. Bruce Lee yeah. pitched that movie. They decided they didn't want Bruce Lee because he didn't speak good enough English and he was Asian. And then they gave it to David Carradine, who never did martial arts at all. And they, they right. put a bald cap on him, and he played this Buddhist guy that roamed the the land doing his kung fu and solving problems and whatnot. And then Bruce Lee got so mad, yeah. he went back to China and did all those movies over there instead of the U.S. After, well, I and know that's Carradine why he left, was known. That's why he left. I know Carrad- That's why he left the Green Hornet show, and he went back to went back to China. Okay, but, no, because I know Carradine was known for like martial arts movies. He he but, got into it because of the role Kung Fu. He knew nothing. There's a whole documentary okay. about Bruce Lee and martial arts movies on Netflix that's actually really good. Okay. And they, they talk about it in there. He didn't know much of anything. Yeah, it's huh. pretty crazy. Yeah, and he's known for his martial arts movie because he did these movies back in the day. And, a lot of them. Yeah. And he, he's like, you know, one, one of... One of the kings of B movies and the Grindhouse, yeah. David Carradine, yeah. Bill Saxton, who played the father in Nightmare on Elm Street, and he's done yep. a ton of, a uh, ton of because yep. he's in he's in the one Cannibal I'm, movie. I know who I know yeah, who David Bill, Carradine is Bill, as Bill reference Saxton's, to like the yeah. older B movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I know, but he's, he he's killed had Bill. A little bit of he's, a resurgence. Yeah. He's killed Bill. He's in, he's Bill. Isn't he the guy who died from the uh, self asphyxiation? Yes, yes, in the closet yes. and whatever. Yeah, that's right. Got I it. Trying... I was going I, by I movies. Know but yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I honestly <laughs> thought he was in the Mortal Kombat movie too. No, that's that's um. The you know who from, I'm talking about? Raiden. From, that's the dude from Highlander. Okay. All right. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, God, why can't I think of names right now? You know what I'm talking about. I do. I know yeah, exactly yeah. what you're talking and about. Then, and I then, get them and then the second sometimes. movie, and the second movie was the guy that played Dexter's dad. He played Raiden, and yes, people. Yeah, he, I, he God, had fucking, the short hair in the second movie. Yeah, 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 fucking names. I can't. I can't think of names right now. But so I yeah. So want to figure that out. So, oh yeah, actually, I was looking to see if he was in Lone Wolf McQuaid, but I got distracted. Oh shit. Mortal Kombat is having a film come out in 2021. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole new movie, uh, and they got cool. some things about it. Actually, I don't, I don't see Lone Wolf McQuaid in here anywhere. Oh, she was in Evil Tunes. That's not oh, what there. Christopher Lambert. Yes. Yes, Christopher Lambert. Yeah. Yeah. Come think of his fucking He was in name. the first one. Yeah. Yeah, he's the Highlander guy. Yep. And then let me see if I can find James Remar is the one. second guy. 
Okay. I just right. name just popped in my head. That's what happens with me. I can't think of anything. And then when I don't so, uh, think you, about it and I you start heard reading Lambert, stuff, it's like poof. and you're like, Oh yeah, that, James Remar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So uh all right, so Richard Lynch here. So yeah, Death Sport seventy eight, amazing movie. It's them like battling on motorcycles and martial arts and lasers, a future dystopia wasteland type. It's it's fucking crazy. It's fun. It's stupid. It's it's bad. Uh, da, da. There's one that like was really fucked up back in the day. I want to find it. He's done a lot of TV. Yeah, yeah. He's he was like the guy. You wanted a bad guy. You wanted like whatever. Like yeah. he was. He's also just a really good actor. He was burned like really bad due to some sort of accident. So he's got a scarred face too. It like kind of fit because okay. there's a movie. That, uh, I remember when I was younger, like bothered me his face. Uh, right. But, uh, where the fuck is it? I, I'm probably past it because I'm like looking. Oh shit! But he he plays sure. like so. He was in the Sword and the Sorcerer '82. That's supposed to be. I have actually. I've probably seen it when I was younger. I don't remember it. That's something we need to cover. That's on one of my okay. list of things to cover. That was an that was Albert Pune's first movie. Who we just did, who did nemesis and stuff yeah it's it's a classic yep. sci-fi like fantasy movie from back in the day it's highly regarded uh where is this fucking movie i i know i'm sorry there's like a lot of dead but it's it's like a really good fucking movie and i can't find it all right, I'm just saving this real quick because he's in the he barbarians named- oh jesus that's with the twin fucking muscle head guys i forgot about that Cut and run. I remember seeing that. I remember that being being good. Yeah. Hold well, on. I'm saving this something. episode because he was in an episode of Acapulco Heat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. that's what brought me to this. Is I saw. Yeah. I yeah, saw yeah. his, and I'm like, oh my god, Acapulco Heat. I should Save. tell Rob about this because he doesn't know <laughs> about the amazingness of Acapulco Heat, like, and how bad the song is. Like, we should totally cover that song and remake it and make it fucked up even more. <laughs> No. For your musicalness. No, I would much turn it rather a, do a shot for a, shot react. I would no, much we should rather turn it into, We should turn it into a, a fucking industrial death metal tune. No, <laughs> no, that song is. <laughs> no, it's awful. It's it's, it's not so even, bad. Like, it's amazing. Maybe I'll get Chewy to do it with me. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I want to do a shot for shot reenactment of the actual video. Get a Humvee, find an endless pool, you know, get a no, van with some no, touchscreen no, monitors. Get, no, no Humvee. We'll get one of those little fucking battery powered little Barbie cars like type things. The Humvees, one of those. <laughs> Drive it off like a dirt. Well, one of those. Instead of a Humvee, you get one of those. Like just borrow it. Someone have do it. Do it all in miniatures. We can build a little dirt ramp near a creek and stuff. <laughs> Not only just just that we'll just film it from far away, <laughs> and then have someone sitting on it, and they'll they'll drive it, but we'll make it look like they're giant. So just like... that one shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> oh. oh fuck! Oh, this oh, guy was okay. also so it was, Alligator so Two. It, so it was '88. It was Bad Dreams. So this movie, like, I actually he, I overlooked that. But I thought maybe that would be the one. So he's a lone survivor of a su- of a suicide cult. A- no, the lone mm-hmm. survivor of a suicide cult wakes up from a 13 year coma in a psychiatric ward, uh, where other patients suddenly start dying under mysterious and gru- gruesome circumstances. I'm pretty sure he plays the suicide cult's head guy. Like, so he's okay. the leader of the suicide cult, and he burns. He lights himself on fire and. He burns everyone in the cult or something, and I just remember like the face from that scene. Because I was seven when this came out, so I probably saw it like a year or two after. Maybe it came out, so I'm like nine years old. It actually like scarred me a little bit. You know what I mean? Like when yeah. I was a kid. I remember this being like a very good, like you know, drama. Like it's considered a horror thriller, so right. But I remember being yeah, more like a know, drama. What? But this might be something worth watching for people. It's I'm a, actually looking classic. at the trailer right now, and um, it's 20th Century Fox, but also yeah. it's the Shout Factory. 
Another yeah, Shout group. Factory. Shout Factory is ma- is making a lot of these old movies available on Blu-ray now. They went and bought all the rights to a shit. Ton yeah, of... Shout Factory say, has its own group... channel too. They have their own thing. Oh, really? No, I was yeah. gonna say uh, another group of people who are out there trying to preserve all of this mm-hmm. awesome cheese um, yep. by getting the rights to all this stuff. Um. Yeah, he's there's just a ton of stuff like that. Yeah, he was in Trancers, Lockdown, Alligator Two, The Mutation. Um, yeah, he's this Jake um, and the Fat Man. <laughs> Jesus fucking That's Christ! One, there's one, your one, one per episode. <laughs> there's their one. What was what was Jake and the Fat Man, and then there was another one. We but Jake and the Fat Man's always Cracker Jack. Like that one. Cracker Jack. No, but there was another another TV show, but. Jake and the Fat Man was the more important one per episode. Yeah, Jake and the Fat Man, everybody's been yeah. in. Like, you ain't nobody if you haven't been in Jake and the Fat <laughs> you Man. You know what the funny part is? We make a joke about it and, like, how much... I've never seen one episode of it, I don't think. Yeah, me neither. M- I thought it was a I joke. Maybe I have when I was younger. Yeah, no, it's, like, a legitimate, like, thing. He's in Puppet yeah. Master 3, uh, Too Long's yep. Revenge. He's in a Star Trek, a couple episodes of Next Generation. Like, you know, I just uh, thought... When we break down these movies, Scanner sometimes Cops, we're going to have to be three. careful. We're going to have to be careful about some of the actors in case we want to do an actor of the week. We don't want to go through all their stuff on a, you know yeah, what I no, mean? Yeah, no, we can still, because yeah, people don't, aren't always watching all this stuff or they skip over this. So an actor of the right, week is right, right. necessarily, yeah. But I'm but saying when we get to certain actors that we yeah. think we want to cover, like, yeah, but I, after I, the I would week never we think into, of this guy. We go into more, he, he would deserve it though. He's in a lot of stuff, but he's like further down the line. It's not anyone I want to do anytime soon, but. He's done enough things. He unfortunately died. Uh, he mm. was in. He he was the principal on Halloween, Rob Zombie's remake. Yep, like you know, very he's, small he just role, has, but but he has that face. You know what I mean? Like you mm-hmm. know, you just know him. Uh, you know, he was in Lords of Salem. Like Rob Zombie used him, and I mean, we shit on Rob Zombie, and we're going to talk about him soon. Actually, no, no, we I, joke, wait, we shit wait. on some of his movies, but like he uses a lot of real actors that may not be mainstream actors but they're all really good actors and they might have been someone back in the day and they kind of didn't make it to the mainstream because they're not pretty people because hollywood only casts pretty people anymore and it doesn't matter zombie or not you know rob zombie does what quentin tarantino started to do and got away from because tarantino used to you know um get a lot of these actors from the grindhouse days and the horror movie days but when he got a little bit more Hollywood eyes, if you will, he got away from that. At least Rob Zombie is staying true to the roots and still, you know, bringing in the people like uh, D. Wallace and, you know, shit like that. Mm-hmm. Thank God. I really wish you'd start using Linnea Quigley a little more because she's still great. Yeah. Agreed. Fucking Lords of Salem. God damn. Yeah, terrible movie. So anyway, we'll move on from him. We go to Billy Drago. The guy does not have a big part, but he's another guy who's a quintessential 90s bad guy. You see his face. Now, he's not in this movie a lot, but he has one of the most essential roles in this movie that leads yeah. to one of the most memorable scenes in the movie by far. And we're, obviously, we'll he talk got about lucky that later. With that. Yeah, he got we'll, lucky we'll, with that. We'll talk role. about that later. But he was Papa Jupiter in the Hills of Eyes remake. He was in Tremors 4, Delta Force 2. He's the main bad guy. He was one of the bad guys in The Untouchables. With uh, Kevin Costner and all those people, oh yeah, that was yeah, a fantastic Co- movie. Yeah. The he's Prohibition you know he's movie, another right? guy that's in B movies like out the out the fucking ass. I mean he's in fucking Children of Corn Genesis. I mean he's in all these other shitty fucking movies. But in the two thousands and mostly the nineties, he was the guy in all these fucking horrible, awesome. B movie action stuff. Uh, hold on, where's uh, I don't even know half of them. I mean, he was in the Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. the TV series with with Bruce Campbell, which you've never seen. Yeah, no. Nope. Oh, so it's so good, but it's from that era where it's it's terribly awesome. And he was also in. Oh, he wasn't in, but you know, Bruce Campbell did that other series, Jack of All Trades. Which I gotta yeah. like loan you because I have those, but supposedly they might be coming out remastered soon on a Blu-ray. Bruce really? Campbell hinted some things out, yes, so they might actually get a so release finally. Is Bruce releasing it on his own? I don't know, but he threw some hints up on Twitter. 
Well, he also uh, mentioned like that Evil Dead ago. 4 is coming soon. Did he say he's going to... Yeah. Well, Sam Raimi said that. Not Bru- Bruce. Bruce, and, tweeted it. And, Bruce tweeted it the other day. And, and uh, oh, did he finally? Because I didn't see that one. And, and they said, we hope Bruce will take up his role again and get him out of you know, retiredness, you know. Because Bruce actually let the the cat out of the bag on the name of the new <coughs> Evil Dead movie. Uh, and it's slipping my okay. mind right now. <coughs> All right, we'll get that in a little bit later. Yeah, so Billy Drago, yeah. Cyborg 2, Glass Shadow, Deadly Heroes, Lady Dragon 2 is a good one, Death Ring, Secret Games, Martial Law 2, Undercover, Delta Force 2. <laughs> He's in a lot of these, like... But there's just it's t- he was in he was in an episode of Friday Thirteenth series that's pretty funny, actually. And monsters. Actually, if you if you go look at the cast of the series of Friday Thirteenth, there's a lot of people in that show who would go on yeah. to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's just funny. Uh, Freeway from 1988, The Untouchables. I'm trying to see, uh, da, da, da. and then mostly TV. He was in yeah. Vamp. A lot of people like saw that. I think. That's the same movie I'm thinking of. Invasion USA. It was in Pale Rider with with um Clint Eastwood. He's one of the one of the one of the bad guys in there. I know he's the deputy. I thought he was a bad guy. He just always plays bad guys, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just he's in he's on all this stuff. There's a lot of a lot of T V. But yeah. He's one of those faces, you'll see his face, and he has a fucking amazing last name, Drago. Like that's awesome. Unfortunately, he died last year, June twenty fourth, at the age of seventy three. Yeah. So no more movies for him, unfortunately. Rest yeah, but you got buddy. a big enough. You got a big back catalog you can fucking go through. Yeah, he's got one hundred and ten credits under his name. I mean, you don't get. You know, your average person on IMD is lucky to get like nineteen or twenty. When you start getting even fifties and sixties, like hundreds is a whole nother level. I mean, you know what I mean? You just yeah. start pumping out movies. You, then but you there's get those like huge Hollywood actors who only get two, 40 and 50 credits. Yeah. Then you get some of these people, you know, they have like 200 plus, 300 almost. Like, it's just ridiculous mm-hmm. how many movies, you know, they're just acting for life. Oh, my fuck. Danny yeah. Trejo probably has like the most that anyone I can think of. He's got a lot, but I don't know if he's got the most, but he's got a lot, though. All right. So, so the, you know, we got to go over the little, the, the nitty gritty of the movie, then we'll get into. So we went over all that stuff, although then we have the trivia, but uh, I would said it's an hour and, an hour and 47 minutes long, released in 1985. Um, budget was hmm. about $10 million. Uh, We're going to get into that. Oh, excuse me. We'll get into that in the trivia in a minute. Opening weekend, out of the $10 million estimated, it pulled uh, just shy of $7 million and grossed. 17 and a half million so it maybe broke even for them it wasn't like a then again who knows they they probably didn't put anywhere near fucking 10 now, million in what we can and that's actually the one thing i wanted to mention because i was watching something yeah, a few weeks ago and i never brought it up so we usually say add double the budget for uh advertising but that seems to be the policy with like major, mo- like Avatar and like Titanic and you know like big it, ones. It, it was the it was the Hollywood norm, not even just for the big ones, but just for. But the like, the movies that they the movies that they knew were going to have like two weeks in theaters, not like th- three months or well, whatever. I, I think the, this was billed as going to be more this one specifically because Chuck Norris. Was I'm just saying on, the ones before that, on yeah. average, like the number yeah. they popped up with was thirty percent, which is still still a pretty, lot of money yeah. on a but that dude on a so, ten million dollar budget. That's three yeah. million dollars yeah. just three three point uh, three. That, yeah, you want to be tech? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy, but. Um, Here's the thing with Canon pictures. I'm sure they didn't fucking put that much. They probably put a million or two if that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, because they needed more money for fucking yeah er- everything you know, else. The other yeah. eight stinkers yeah. they were putting out that yeah. week. So this one might have made a little bit of money for them. Obviously, when we get into the other thing, you know, we're going to explain <laughs> how this movie did make some money though. Uh, when I get into the trivia, so that trivia is just going to. I know it blew your mind with that one trivia thing. So I'm not going to blow everyone else's mind. Did yeah. MGM, facts. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we went over Canon Films. There's not much to go in on here. Uh, 
It does have some shitty subtitles with it, though, unfortunately, because they speak some Russian, some Spanish, and stuff, and it doesn't really... I noticed that a lot yeah. with movies lately. Like, they used to be good with it, but lower budgets and more movies now, if there's a foreign language, sometimes the subtitles just say, speaking French, speaking... You know, they don't even, like, translate it anymore. It's kind of annoying. I wish they would. So it could be, like, semi... I, I don't want to... All right, certain movies absolutely need subtitles yeah. but certain movies don't like i believe the godfather does not need subtitles it's they speak italian it sets the scene it sets the mood but a movie like this where like they're already taking out so much of the fucking plot <laughs> there, you might we need, you might as need much, to pick something up yeah we yeah. need as much information as possible <laughs> all right so i didn't go through all these trivias uh, you know, I'm not going to go through the goofs and all that other bullshit. I'm not mm-hmm. worried about that for this one. But so for the, the big one here, it was that in, until 2007, which is only, you know, 13 years ago. But considering mm-hmm. this movie was made in 85, it's a pretty relevant number. You know, it's almost 30 years. It was yeah. MGM's second highest selling home video title behind Gone with the Wind. And Gone with the Wind is one of those movies they consider the top three movies of all time yeah i mean citizen kane you got like citizen kane gone the wind and casablanca i think they always consider yeah like the the three biggest movies of all time when you talk to those artsy douchebag critics um yeah none of those movies hold up today i'm sorry yeah i haven't even seen all of them so let's just leave it at that i don't even bother so anyway so going back to the explosion thing this is what i was going to come in for it's a not really a spoiler alert, but a lot of things get fucking blown up in this movie. We've already gone over that. But uh, Lynch and his crew, Re- Rezoff or Rez- whatever his fucking name was, and his crew, they blew up a real residential neighborhood during shooting. Remember when they park all those trucks and start shooting all the houses? Oh, yeah. That is Christmas a time. real neighborhood. They blew up all those fucking houses because... The neighborhood was slated for demolition due to an expansion to the Hartsfield Airport runway. So the Atlanta Film Commission gave the Cannon Group permission to blow it all up. The area is currently the site of the Georgia International Convention Center in College Park, Georgia. See, and this is what we ta- yep. talked about with Nemesis. And Nemesis You're and some ne- other movies in the future. You're never going to get these nope. awesome fucking scenes nope. anymore. No, they literally looked like, you know, they dressed it up a little bit, but it was literally a, a fucking neighborhood that came in. You know, but they had to put some lights mm-hmm. on. They put some yeah, yeah, they made it look the windows relevant. Lived in, because I'm sure it, it didn't, you know, people moved. They they paid those people for their houses. They moved all the <laughs> I doubt somebody's coming home from the grocery store and yeah. like, hey, what are all these cameras doing? <laughs> what <Yeah>. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they make it even funnier, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they they blew the fuck out of this residential neighborhood, and it's awesome. So, Avenging Force in 1986 was originally written as a sequel to this film with Chuck Norris returning as the role of Matt Hunter. Now, Chuck Norris's name in this movie is pretty awesome. uh, Awesome action movie name. (laughs) Bill Stryker, Matt Hunter, Mm. fucking... There was a guy I played roller derby with, or actually played against him most of the time, and he transferred from my team from Massachusetts, and his name was Dick Stryker. Dick. Uh, that was a little on the nose, or on the it's, head. It's, it's awesome, though, but you know what I mean? Like, he could have been funnier and called, been, like, Richard Stryker, or, you know what I mean? Like, and it would have been a little, like, more, more clever I... in a way, but it's just a funny name, you know what I mean? Like, it's just funny, but. Did I tell you I went to school with a kid? Everyone called him Buddy. Um, it was my first day in eighth grade and I moved down to Delaware. I didn't know anyone homeroom taking attendance and, uh, his name was buddy cock C O C K E. You know what his real name is? What? Harold. Harold cock. Harry cock. Harry. Hmm. And I busted out laughing. Yeah, his parents, but parents hated him as a child, but Everyone in the kids in that classroom already laughed about this over the years because they've known him for years, but yeah. I never knew this. So, like, I start laughing, and then, like, everyone looked at me. I'm like, what? This isn't funny? This is hilarious. No, they were all used to it. That's why they all call him Buddy. Yeah. So, sorry, Buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry, Buddy. All right, so when he was un- 
uninterested uninterested in the role. Uh, the role was rewritten to be younger and was given to the rising canon star, Michael Dudikoff. We went over him, the uh, Tom Matthews lookalike. Mm-hmm. Instead, and despite sharing the same name, the uh, main character name, the, the film, the finished film was no longer truly a sequel or a prequel to the earlier film, but stood on its own as a standalone movie. Now, I don't... Well, that that's their opinion. I, <laughs> I maybe have seen this, but it's another old one. I've seen a lot of Michael Dudikoff movies, but he's mostly known for... The American Ninja series, which is fantastic. I suggest we see them eventually on here. They're definitely great. And it's House not films. Tom Matthews, which no. I totally thought when I With saw that. that, that was, yep. And that and that's the one he said his parents thought he got hired <laughs> for that in the interview. And yeah. That picture specifically mm-hmm. looks know, just like him. Like, that's why I asked him that question in the interview. It literally <laughs> people get confused by him. All right, so Chuck Norris performed most of his own stunts, including the scene where he hangs off the side of the pickup truck while it's driven through the shopping center kiosk and windows. Oh, another action movie trope, driving through the orange fruit carts or the fucking <laughs> kiosk. Well, I mean, that they, just, come they on. They literally just drive through a fucking mall in this movie and just, like, yeah. that's just awesome. Very I, blues brother. drive through a fucking mall, yeah. All right, so you know what uh, they actually Wait, got. We should actually no, go we should edit the Blues Brother music behind that scene. Uh, yeah, maybe. So well, I'll do it. So Joseph Zito uh, got told that Mechem uh, Gon. I don't know how to say his name, but he's they're I'm pretty sure they're Israeli, so it's got to be pronounced something like that. I'm not trying to actually be like a dick. They're the owners no, of Canon. I, I think they were Israeli. Um, yeah. Uh, they they owned Canon. They said they were on the phone. And, you know, knowing, you know, Zito feared the worst, knowing how, you know, Golan's frugal ways and history of slashing budgets, you know. But he took the call anyway. Much of a surprise, Golan said he was delighted by the footage he had seen and was given the production an extra $2 million. It's amazing. I don't know where it went in this movie. Probably in all the cuts, ever, all the scenes that were cut, <laughs> and that is the only time a Jew would offer anything extra. <laughs> and then here uh, uh, we were talking about earlier, Canon completely removed all the story elements and the background characters in the editing room in order to concentrate on Chuck Norris and the action. Editor Daniel Lowenthal has stated that Canon's cut made the film heavily episodic and pretty much a collection of explosive action scenes. We talked about that earlier. Before you even you even said that, I said this movie lacks any meat on the bone. Yep. No, no, it doesn't lack the meat on the bone. It is all meat, no bone. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah. You actually said it to me last time we were trying to film this. You're like, it just played, and that's what we were talking about. But it turns out a lot of that stuff was cut out, which is why it ended up being that way. It makes sense. I totally don't see this one. Whoopi Goldberg was Chuck Norris's first choice to play the female journalist. Don't ask me why. Chuck Zito disagreed and cast someone else. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. But Whoopi was the hot thing back then in the 80s and the early 90s until she turned turned psycho craze. <sighs> Dude. So in uh, in the German versions, that was changed to American terrorists instead of German in Russia because of the East and West. Oh, Germany get was off a thing. your dick. So that, like, not the... Not that make a tense relationship with the USSR. What? We are never the bad guys. It's like (laughs) Germany here in America. (laughs) Y'all are the bad guys all the fucking time. Well, because of East and West Germany, because the USSR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the US, Brit, uh, England, and and France. Germans. German should actually be a little happy over 9-11 yeah. because then all of our movie villains became Middle Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> so we so, finally got off that boat. So for the German dub version, the name Mikhail Rostov was changed to Michael Hames. Like, to be like an American-ish <laughs> name. Yeah. Gay. Uh, da, 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 da. So I, you would know more about this one. So the 35 millimeter prints uh, for this mm-hmm. movie are six reels long. Is that a lot? Massive. I, I know but, most of them are usually like three or four <clears throat> reels, right? I guess. But again, this is what we were talking about. How much was cut cut out from yeah. the editing room? Because yeah. how long? Six feet? What's that? You said it, it was six feet, you said? No, no, the 35 no. 35 millimeter? Six, six reels long. 
the 35 oh, millimeter Oh, Jesus. Print. It was six reels? Yeah, okay. six reels. Because so thir- the normal movie is like three or four, right? Hold on. An hour. No. No. 42 minutes, I think, fits on one reel. So what's 42 times 42 minutes times six? Uh, the, 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 uh, fucking hours. No, is it more than that? So it's an hour and a half, six. an hour and a half, an hour and a half. It's four and a half hours. Divided, uh, divide Roughly. that by six. No. Sorry. Uh, four and a half hours ish. Yeah, forty-two minutes times. We we'll just call it forty-five. Forty-five and forty-five is an hour and a half times that by three. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty-two minutes. So two hundred and forty minutes is four hours. Yeah, but they got to be shorter then. Can't be forty-two minutes that, then. That no, I'm saying a thirty-five yeah. millimeter reel yeah, on average just, they said is like forty minutes. I don't know, but it's 147 minutes and oh, okay. So I'm looking, it's it's a standard length of a 35 millimeter reel is a thousand feet, which runs approximately right. 11 minutes for the sound sound the film, 24 and 15, frames per second, 15 minutes for silent film. At a more or less standard at of 16 six, frames. But that's at 16 frames per second, where this was shot in 24 f- uh, frame per yeah. second. So just jump up 15 and 11 to about 18 and like 12. So 18. So, okay, 30 minutes. So about a half hour. A so, real yeah, is. yeah. So th- still three hours this thing was cut down from. Because we were saying well, how it, much did they cut yeah, out? Well, it was probably cut down. It was, it was probably originally six 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 reels right which would have been about a, three hours yeah, of footage and it's and it almost cut to an it's hour. just shot it's just shy of two hours so it's they like had thir- to cut about shy. an hour of footage yeah God. this was going to be like Dude, an epic been a, movie probably it was probably a yeah. really good movie like a good movie with all the other shit in it, and then they cut That's it. That's what I'm saying, dude. This probably would have been like a classic action. Yeah, yeah, three hours, but then think, like, your Godfathers are that long. I mean, there's movies mm-hmm. out there that people sit yeah. through if they're good. Yeah, this this could have been, God. like, a serious, like, crazy, awesome classic action movie, yeah. So you, you know, want to so guess what the, what the body count is, because that's the last thing on here they actually body have a count. body count number for this see movie. It, it's <laughs> tough though because there's a lot of army versus fucking i know i know killing. i know I, I think they add uh, some of that in here i would say it like conservatively like at least a hundred at okay, least a hundred what's your non-conservative guess like no more than like 150 140 okay i would now, i would get like, i would I would have guessed with you about 100, 110, somewhere in there. Yeah. It's actually 129. It was a good, good, good initial guess. You're in between. You're, you're like that's why I asked what your high conservative one. You're yeah. 150. So you're right in between. It's one body shy of 130. God damn! But that's still that's it's a, a it's lot. It's a high of death fucking... count. 129 people killed in this movie. I wonder if we could find that information for other action movies, though. Yeah, that's... I mean, there might be a site for that. Maybe we should look into that for the future. I just like because this yeah. one threw it in there. <laughs> they listed it on the spoilers. I don't think it's a spoiler that you're going to tell me how many people died in an action movie. You're going to turn on a Chuck <laughs> Norris movie? If I could, oh, wait, somebody dies in this? No, I can't yeah. watch this. Wait, someone died. I don't know. the fuck? So, somebody yeah, I mean, rode uh, a rocket to Funky Town mm-hmm. on this movie. What the fuck? And... That's all I got for, you know, Invasion USA for our pre-prep here. The only next thing would be part two and break down the movie. Yeah. You have anything else you want to add? No, I just want to lead in uh, with, obviously, Gore's pick of the week. Last yeah. week, uh, maybe two weeks ago now, I did the kill of the week separate and actually did a little video for Facebook on uh, the zombie two scene that she mm-hmm. picked. And uh, it, it turned out pretty cool. You know, I, I used some of the scenes in a small window and stuff. Didn't use yeah. any of the audio. Um, didn't get any problem with flag or copyright stuff. 
Um, so obviously can't put it on YouTube because I don't want to take that risk. But um, you'll always have the pick of the week during these episodes. Kill of the week, you know, we can do that if it well, becomes a problem. You didn't, you didn't get hit for your Friday the 13th video, did you? No. So, but you see how very spare, like sparingly I use. Well, the, you you, put, there, you did put a couple of them where the, it's the whole picture though. One, the yeah. one, like one that two. I did was the opening I still, sequence. I still, where still it, haven't watched the whole thing. I'm a I'm a bad person. So I haven't finished no, well, watching dude, it. We yeah. live through each other's shit. Like know, we don't. We said I, it. We don't. I can pretty much. Our shit I can pretty time. much think already. And we maybe already had a conversation on. Exactly, it's yeah. in that thing, so I don't need to really watch it, I don't think. You'll know it, you'll make okay. a list before watching it and check it off as mm -hmm. it goes because you'll know every I'll fucking know, yeah. gripe I have with um, that. The only thing I would like to say is uh, if you like what we do, help support us by becoming a Patreon. We should have put this in the beginning and we always forget. We keep saying we're going to do it and we never do. Yeah, you know, and real quick, we always talk about we want the podcast to feel way more natural, like conversation wise, and we don't necessarily yeah. want it scripted. But there's certain things in the episode that we kind of have to script just to keep a, a continuity. I well, I don't think there's anything scripted in our podcast. There's stuff that's scripted-ish in a small. No, no, I'm videos, saying but... we don't want it to be scripted. Yeah. But there's certain things that well, may we, end we, up being we that have way, a, like we intros have a, and yeah, we have, we have to do an intro. I guess. You consider it scripted because we go over the actors and the, we, we have a no, list no, 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 nothing to like... do with our podcast. But I'm saying when we bring up, hey, make sure you check us out here. Oh, yeah, make sure yeah, you yeah. like that. No, stuff, no, like, we got to do it. But we have like an outline. So that technically makes it a little bit scripted. But that's just because we got to follow like our outline yeah, for but... our videos, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or we might have specific things written down about specific scenes. Yeah. Yeah. But not scripted, like we're practicing lines. But when it comes to like, hey, make sure you check us out on Patreon. Make sure you check out, you know, like that yeah. spiel. Because we're not just making these videos for people who are already fans. Obviously, we want to get new fans. Yeah. So we want to let them know what we're doing and shit like that. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, we um, appreciate all feedback. You know, go to our Facebook page, our YouTube's comment. Leave us likes, gripes, hate. We, we don't even a, care. Just comment. <laughs> yeah we actually just, have a really cool yeah. facebook group like our normal people who are there all the time yeah like stacy mark ray mm -hmm. yeah. um you know gabe gabe my mom monica mm -hmm. kate yeah, um Gore, Gore comes in monica yep cat cat used to come in a lot and calling her out because we haven't seen her lately yeah yeah <sighs> Marv. We have, we have a good, we have a good, we have yeah. a good group of people. But we, and there's you know, always we have room our, for more. I turned my old Discord into a Grindhouse Discord now. Like it was just like from our friends. So we kind of have our own little forum chat area. Yeah. If people want to join that, if they want to join the Discord, we gotta we gotta post it more and 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 play it promote up in it there a little and, more. And, yeah, promote it a little more. Chat in there. Obviously, uh, had a good conversation with a person. I don't know if you saw, we were talking. About the Friday Thirteenth stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got the notifications with, through that. Yeah, with someone. Who was that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just around the person. Oh, neat. I'm, okay. I'm terrible. <laughs> ter 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 that's what I'm saying. I had a good conversation with a random. I, I yeah. I'd pull pulling a mind blank. I wanted to mention the person's name, and I completely fucking mind blank. But you know what? I'm just gonna pull it up anyway on on Facebook in a second because I do want to get the person a shout out because we exchanged messages here and there and. uh was pretty, you know, we we didn't agree, yeah. but it was cool because we didn't agree. Nicholas Becker is his name. Okay, give give Nicholas Becker a shout out on our Facebook page. So I had a nice exchange with him about some movies, and he's gonna post in the future, and we can talk some more. That's what we like, and people nice, yeah, you know, leave us comments, and we interaction. We start talking about movies. Me and him talked about Hellraiser. He was wanted to do see a son of Freddy or something in a new movie. I was like, fuck no. <laughs> oh yeah, I you know what? He commented because yeah. uh the I said that what's his name? Robert England would be coming back. Yeah, yeah. I saw that exchange. Yeah. I thought you were talking on Discord. No, 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 yeah, no I don't no, agree with Facebook, the son of Facebook. Freddy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying, but we had a nice exchange. We started talking about Hellraiser yeah. and, and some of the Chucky movies briefly and stuff. You know, it was mm -hmm. it was nice. It was just you know No, it's people. fun to talk to more fans yeah. about the stuff that we you and yeah. I usually talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stuff um, we talk about. We, we should I post more also, about that stuff, but that's what I wanted to turn the Discord into. We should probably post more 
stuff in the Discord. Yeah, it's just like that. right now we have so many more fans on the Facebook. Yeah. That's I want, I want to yeah. turn the Discord into like our main chat area. Like I said, we wanted to sort of weed, wean ourselves off of Facebook eventually. Yeah, we, we all hate Facebook, so we wanted to maybe make they Discord, just make shit hard. Discord That's our all. main main hangout area. commenting post and, and then we have YouTube you know some people use twitter some people use you know whatever. reddit this, yeah but um yeah reddish is uh, successful of porn i know i know <laughs> but you know i do want to give a uh gray, shout gray is going to make the... gray is going to make an only fans account on reddit possibly uh i do want to give a shout out but it'll be at the beginning of our next episode before we kick off the movie. It'll only take five minutes. Make sure you tune into that because there's some big news coming up with some of our friends. All right. So, yeah, go to our Patreon. Right. Help help us uh, become a better podcast and fund our, our laser disc project. If not, if you don't have one, donate one. That'd be amazing. Even if it's broken, I will try to fix the goddamn thing. We'll we'll do our best, and then obviously we'll. We're I mean, obvi- some obviously, if you send us if you, if you send if you send us a laser disc, you will be getting gifts in the mail. Also, yeah, we'll definitely help you out. We'll definitely, we we'll definitely, definitely hook you up with some stuff. Um, anything else? No. All right. All right, guys. If tune any- in for part two. Actually, I will throw in if someone throws us a laser disc, like a year free of Grindhouse on the Patreon. I will, I will give them yeah. all the special serial killer links and all the stuff we do in Grindhouse and maybe throw them a shirt. Well, not maybe. Yeah, throw a little bit of merchandise. No, 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 no. Seriously, because mer- you know, like if, if you're saving us from spending three, four hundred dollar, yeah. you know, yeah, I'll definitely hook you up with some awesome giveaway some shit. stuff up there. So I'll put that out there. We'll do a, a year yeah, free we'll on the Grindhouse. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Has to be a good one, though. Awesome. Not like your hundred dollar... Like I mean, we can go I, buy. It. Actually, it doesn't. It could be anyone. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, no. It. Even if it is yeah, like a hundred dollar laser player, as long as it works and as it, long can as it play, works. Yeah, I, I'll give you some merch. Fuck it. <laughs> we'll take a fancy broken one. If I get that shit to play, I'll actually throw some money to them too. If eventually. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. We want. We want to, we, we're trying to buy ourselves a double a double reader laser player. We're getting fancy. We don't want to. One that we, we don't, don't have to flip, flip those bitches over, over. But still, hey. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, okay? Yeah, yeah, nope. No, I'm just saying, eventually, you want to get ourselves one of those double double oh, reader Muse. The Muse ones. I want the one with the five disc desk. CD player and the karaoke machine I connected. I want the one with the, the Sega CD and the Turbo Graphics. Yeah. That shit was $900. We'll do a, wait, 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 wait. We'll do a laser disc episode. <laughs> Even yeah, if it's just yeah. like an extra thing, we're we going to talk talking about laser all disc, about laser disc. Crazy, craziness. But yeah. All right, so All right, guys. on that note, I guess we're done, right? Oh, this is Comeback I am for Part 2. I'm Wolfman. Come back for Part 2, and you're all awesome. Out. Bye. Bye.